preface of myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine barry judson this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by david wales myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine barry judson preface in the beginning of the new making the ancient fathers lived successively in four caves in the four fold containing earth the first was of sooty blackness black as a chimney at night-time the second dark as the night in the stormy season the third like a valley in starlight the fourth with a light like the dawning then they came up in the nightshine into the world of knowing and seeing so runs the zuni myth and it typifies well the mental development insight and beauty of speech of the indian tribes along the pacific coast from those of alaska in the faraway northland with half of life spent in actual darkness and more than half in the struggle for existence against the cold and the storms loosed by fatal curiosity from the bear's bag of bitter icy winds to the exquisite imagery of the zunis and other desert tribes on their sunny plains in the southland it was in the nightshine of this southern land with its clear dry air and brilliant stars that the indians looking up at the heavens above them told the story of the bag of stars of utset the first mother who gave to the scarab beetle when the floods came the bag of star people sending him first into the world above it was a long climb to the world above and the tired little fellow once safe sat down by the sack after a while he cut a tiny hole in the bag just to see what was in it but the star people flew out and filled the heavens everywhere yet he saved a few stars by grasping the neck of the sack and sat there frightened and sad when utset the first mother asked what he had done with the beautiful star people the sky father himself in those early years of the new making spread out his hand with the palm downward and into all the wrinkles of his hand set the semblance of shining yellow corn grains gleaming like sparks of fire in the dark of the early world dawn see said sky father to earth mother our children shall be guided by these when the sun father is not near and thy mountain terraces are as darkness itself then shall our children be guided by light so sky father created the stars then he said and even as these grains gleam upward from the water so shall seed grain like them spring up from the earth when touched by water to nourish our children and he created the golden seed stuff of the corn it is around the beautiful corn maidens that perhaps the most delicate of all imagery clings maidens offended when the dancers sought their presence all too freely no longer holding them so precious as in the olden times so that in white garments they became invisible in the thickening white mists then sadly and noiselessly they stole in amongst the people and laid their corn wands down amongst the trays and laid their white broidered garments thereon as mothers lay soft kilting over their babes even as the mists became they and with the mists drifting fled away to the south summer land they began the search for the corn maidens found at last only by Payatuma, the god of dawn from whose flute came wonderful music as of liquid voices in caverns or the echo of women's laughter in water vases heard only by men of nights as they wandered up and down the river trail when he paused to rest on his journey playing on his painted flute butterflies and birds sought him and he sent them before to seek the maidens even before they could hear the music of his song sound and the maidens filled their coloured trays with seed corn from their fields and over all spread broidered mantles broidered with the bright colours and the creature signs of the summer land and thus following him journeyed only at night and dawn as the dead do and the stars also back to the seed people they came but only to give to the ancients the precious seed and this having been given the darkness of night fell upon them as shadows in deep night so these maidens of the seed of corn the beloved and beautiful were seen no more of men 
but shutsuka walked behind the maidens whistling shrilly as they sped southward even as the frost wind whistles when the corn is gathered away among the lone canes and the dry leaves of a gleaned field the myths of california in general are of the same type as those given in a preceding volume on the myths of the pacific northwest indeed many of the myths of northern californian tribes are so obviously the same as those of the modocs and klamath indians that they have not been repeated coyote and fox reign supreme as they do along the entire coast though the birds of the air take a greater part in the creation of things these stories are quaint and whimsical but they lack the beauty of the myths of the desert tribes there is nothing in all californian myths so far as i have studied them which in any way compares with the one of the corn maidens referred to above or the sia myths of the cloud people in the compilation of this volume the same idea has governed as in the two preceding volumes simply the preparation of a volume of the quainter purer myths suitable for general reading authentic and with illustrations of the country portrayed but with no pretensions to being a purely scientific piece of work scientific people know well the government documents and reports of learned societies which contain myths of all kinds good and bad and indifferent but the volumes of this series are intended for popular use changes have been made only in abridgments of long conversations and of ceremonial details which detracted from the myth as a myth even though of great ethnological importance a special credit is due in this volume to the work of the ethnologists whose work has appeared in the publications of the smithsonian institute and the u s geographical and geological surveys west of the rocky mountains to mrs matilda cox stevenson for the sia myths and to the late james stevenson for the navajo myths and sand painting to the late frank hamilton cushing for the zuni myths to the late frank russell for the pima myths to the late stephen powers for the californian myths and also to james mooney and cosmos mendeleff the recent publications of the university of california on the myths of the tribes of that state have not been included thanks are also due to the smithsonian institution for the illustrations accredited to them to the carnegie institution of washington for illustrations from the desert botanical laboratory at tucson arizona and to mr ferdinand ellerman of the mount wilson observatory and to others k b j department of history university of washington end of preface part one of myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine barry judson this librivox recording is in the public domain part one the beginning of newness zuni new mexico before the beginning of the new making the all-father father alone had being through ages there was nothing else except black darkness in the beginning of the new making the all-father father thought outward in space and mists were created and uplifted thus through his knowledge he made himself the son who was thus created and is the great father the dark spaces brightened with light the cloud mists thickened and became water from his flesh the sun father created the seed stuff of worlds and he himself rested upon the waters and these two the fourfold containing earth mother and the all-covering sky father the surpassing beings with power of changing their forms even as smoke changes in the wind were the father and mother of the soul beings then as man and woman spoke these two together behold said earth mother as a great terraced bowl appeared at hand and within it water this shall be the home of my tiny children on the rim of each world country in which they wander terraced mountains shall stand making in one region many mountains by which one country shall be known from another then she spat on the water and struck it and stirred it with her fingers foam gathered about the terraced rim mounting higher and higher 
then with her warm breath she blew across the terraces white flecks of foam broke away and floated over the water but the cold breath of sky father shattered the foam and it fell downwards in fine mist and spray then earth mother spoke even so shall white clouds float up from the great waters at the borders of the world and clustering about the mountain terraces of the horizon shall be broken and hardened by thy cold then will they shed downward in rain spray the water of life even into the hollow places of my lap for in my lap shall nestle our children mankind and creature kind for warmth in thy coldness so even now the trees on high mountains near the clouds and sky father crouch low toward earth mother for warmth and protection warm is earth mother cold our sky father then sky father said even so yet i too will be helpful to our children then he spread his hand out with the palm downward and into all the wrinkles of his hand he set the semblance of shining yellow corn grains in the dark of the early world dawn they gleamed like sparks of fire see he said pointing to the seven grains between his thumb and four fingers our children shall be guided by these when the sun father is not near and thy terraces are as darkness itself then shall our children be guided by lights so sky father created the stars then he said and even as these grains gleam up from the water so shall seed grain like them spring up from the earth when touched by water to nourish our children and thus they created the seed corn and in many other ways they devised for their children the soul beings but the first children in a cave of the earth were unfinished the cave was of sooty blackness black as a chimney at night-time and foul loud became their murmurings and lamentations until many sought to escape growing wiser and more manlike but the earth was not then as we now see it then sun father sent down two sons sons also of the foam cap the beloved twain twin brothers of light yet elder and younger the right and the left like to question and answer in deciding and doing to them the sun father imparted his own wisdom he gave them the great cloud bow and for arrows the thunderbolts of the four quarters for buckler they had the fog-making shield spun and woven of the floating clouds and spray the shield supports its bearer as clouds are supported by the wind yet hides its bearer also and he gave to them the fathership and control of men and of all creatures then the beloved twain with their great cloud bow lifted the sky father into the vault of the skies that the earth might become warm and fitter for men and creatures then along the sun-seeking trail they sped to the mountains westward with magic knives they spread open the depths of the mountain and uncovered the cave in which dwelt the unfinished men and creatures so they dwelt with men learning to know them and seeking to lead them out now there were growing things in the depths like grasses and vines so the beloved twain breathed on the stems growing tall toward the light as grasses want to do making them stronger and twisting them upward until they formed a great ladder by which men and creatures ascended to a second cave up the ladder into the second cave world men and the beings crowded following closely the two little but mighty ones yet many fell back and were lost in the darkness they peopled the underworld from which they escaped in after time amid terrible earth shakings in this second cave it was as dark as the night of a stormy season but larger of space and higher here again men and the beings increased and their complainings grew loud so the twain again increased the growth of the ladder and again led men upward not all at once but in six bands to become the fathers of the six kinds of men the yellow the tawny gray the red the white the black and the mingled 
and this time also many were lost or left behind now the third great cave was larger and lighter like a valley in starlight and again they increased in number and again the two led them out into a fourth cave here it was light like dawning and men began to perceive and to learn variously according to their natures wherefore the twain taught them first to seek the sun father then as the last cave became filled and men learned to understand the two led them forth again into the great upper world which is the world of knowing seeing the men of the early times zuni new mexico eight years was but four days and four nights when the world was new it was while such days and nights continued that men were led out in the night shine of the world of seeing for even when they saw the great star they thought it the sun father himself it so burned their eyeballs men and creatures were more alike then than now our fathers were black like the caves they came from their skins were cold and scaly like those of mud creatures their eyes were goggled like an owl's their ears were like those of cave bats their feet were webbed like those of walkers in wet and soft places they had tails long or short as they were old or young men crouched when they walked or crawled along the ground like lizards they feared to walk straight but crouched as before time they had in their cave worlds that they might not stumble or fall in the uncertain light when the morning star arose they blinked excessively when they beheld its brightness and cried out that now surely the father was coming but it was only the elder of the bright ones heralding with his shield of flame the approach of the sun father and when low down in the east the sun father himself appeared though shrouded in the mist of the world waters they were blinded and heated by his light and glory they fell down wallowing and covered their eyes with their hands and arms yet ever as they looked toward the light they struggled toward the sun as moths and other night creatures seek the light of a campfire thus they became used to the light but when they rose and walked straight no longer bending and looked upon each other they sought to clothe themselves with girdles and garments of bark and rushes and when by walking only upon their hinder feet they were bruised by stone and sand they plaited sandals of yucca fibre creation and longevity akomawe pit river california coyote began the creation of the earth but eagle completed it coyote scratched it up with his paws out of nothingness but eagle complained there were no mountains for him to perch on so coyote made hills but they were not high enough therefore eagle scratched up great ridges when eagle flew over them his feathers dropped down took root and became trees the pin feathers became bushes and plants coyote and fox together created man they quarrelled as to whether they should let men live always or not coyote said if they want to die let them die fox said if they want to come back let them come back but coyote's medicine was stronger and nobody ever came back coyote also brought fire into the world for the indians were freezing he journeyed far to the west to a place where there was fire stole some of it and brought it home in his ears he kindled a fire in the mountains and the indians saw the smoke of it and went up and got fire old moles creation shastica california long long ago before there was any earth old mole burrowed underneath somewhere and threw up the earth which forms the world then great man created the people but the indians were cold now in the east gleamed the white firestone therefore coyote journeyed eastward and brought back the firestone for the indians so people had fire in the beginning sun had nine brothers all flaming hot like himself 
but coyote killed the nine brothers and so saved the world from burning up but moon also had nine brothers all made of ice like himself and the night people almost froze to death therefore coyote went away out on the eastern edge of the world with his flint stone knife he heated stones to keep his hands warm and as the moons arose he killed one after another with his flint stone knife until he had slain nine of them thus the people were saved from freezing at night when it rains some indian sick in heaven is weeping long long ago there was a good young indian on earth when he died the indians wept so that a flood came upon the earth and drowned all people except one couple the creation of the world pima arizona in the beginning there was nothing at all except darkness all was darkness and emptiness for a long long while the darkness gathered until it became a great mass over this the spirit of earth doctor drifted to and fro like a fluffy bit of cotton in the breeze then earth doctor decided to make for himself an abiding place so he thought within himself come forth some kind of plant and there appeared the creosote bush he placed this before him and set it upright but it at once fell over he set it upright again again it fell so it fell until the fourth time it remained upright then earth doctor took from his breast a little dust and flattened it into a cake when the dust cake was still he danced upon it singing a magic song next he created some black insects which made black gum on the creosote bush then he made a termite which worked with the small earth cake until it grew very large as he sang and danced upon it the flat world stretched out on all sides until it was as large as it is now then he made a round sky cover to fit over it round like the houses of the pimas but the earth shook and stretched so that it was unsafe so earth doctor made a gray spider which was to spin a web around the edges of the earth and sky fastening them together when this was done the earth grew firm and solid earth doctor made water mountains trees grass and weeds made everything as we see it now but all was still inky blackness then he made a dish poured water into it and it became ice he threw this round block of ice far to the north and it fell in the place where the earth and sky were woven together at once the ice began to gleam and shine we call it now the sun it rose from the ground in the north up into the sky and then fell back earth doctor took it and threw it to the west where the earth and sky were sewn together it rose into the sky and again slid back to the earth then he threw it to the far south but it slid back again to the flat earth then at last he threw it to the east it rose higher and higher in the sky until it reached the highest point in the round blue cover and began to slide down on the other side and so the sun does even yet then earth doctor poured more water into the dish and it became ice he sang a magic song and threw the round ball of ice to the north where the earth and sky are woven together it gleamed and shone but not so brightly as the sun it became the moon and it rose in the sky but fell back again just as the sun had done so he threw the ball to the west and then to the south but it slid back each time to the earth then he threw it to the east and it rose to the highest point in the sky cover and began to slide down on the other side and so it does even today, following the sun but earth doctor saw that when the sun and moon were not in the sky all was inky darkness so he sang a magic song and took some water into his mouth and blew it into the sky in a spray to make little stars then he took his magic crystal and broke it into pieces and threw them into the sky to make the larger stars next he took his walking stick and placed ashes on the end of it then he drew it across the sky to form the milky way so earth doctor made all the stars 
spider's creation sia new mexico in the beginning long long ago there was but one being in the lower world this was the spider sasistinaco at that time there were no other insects no birds animals or any other living creature the spider drew a line of meal from north to south and then crossed it with another line running east and west on each side of the first line north of the second he placed two small parcels they were precious but no one knows what was in them except spider then he sat down near the parcels and began to sing the music was low and sweet and the two parcels accompanied him by shaking like rattles then two women appeared one from each parcel in a short time people appeared and began walking around then animals birds and insects appeared and the spider continued to sing until his creation was complete but there was no light and as there were many people they did not pass about much for fear of treading upon each other the two women first created were the mothers of all one was named utset and she is the mother of all indians the other was now utset and she was the mother of all other nations while it was still dark the spider divided the people into clans saying to some you are of the corn clan and you are the first of all to others he said you belong to the coyote clan so he divided them into their clans the clans of the bear the eagle and other clans after spider had nearly created the earth ha arts he thought it would be well to have rain to water it so he created the cloud people the lightning people the thunder people and the rainbow people to work for the people of ha arts the earth he divided this creation into six parts and each had its home in a spring in the heart of a great mountain upon whose summit was a giant tree one was in the spruce tree on the mountain of the north another in the pine tree on the mountain of the west another in the oak tree on the mountain of the south and another in the aspen tree on the mountain of the east the fifth was on the cedar tree on the mountain of the zenith and the last in an oak on the mountain of the nadir the spider divided the world into three parts haarts the earth tinia the middle plain and huwaka the upper plain then the spider gave to these people of the clouds and to the rainbow tinia the middle plain now it was still dark but the people of haarts made houses for themselves by digging in the rocks and the earth they could not build houses as they do now because they could not see in a short time utset and Nautset talked much to each other saying we will make light that our people may see we cannot tell the people now but to-morrow will be a good day and the day after to-morrow will be a good day meaning that their thoughts were good so they spoke with one tongue they said now all is covered with darkness but after a while we will have light then these two mothers being inspired by sustenaco the spider made the sun from white shell turkeys redstone and abalone shell after making the sun they carried him to the east and camped there since there were no houses the next morning they climbed to the top of a high mountain and dropped the sun down behind it after a time he began to ascend when the people saw the light they were happy when the sun was far off his face was blue as he came nearer the face grew brighter yet they did not see the sun himself but only a large mask which covered his whole body the people saw that the world was large and the country beautiful when the two mothers returned to the village they said to the people we are the mothers of all the sun lighted the world during the day but there was no light at night so the two mothers created the moon from a slightly black stone many kinds of yellow stone turkis and a red stone that the world might be lighted at night but the moon travelled slowly and did not always give light then the two mothers created the star people and made their eyes of sparkling white crystal that they might twinkle and brighten the world at night when the star people lived in the lower world they were gathered into beautiful groups they were not scattered about as they are in the upper world 
the gods and the six regions in ancient times poshai ankia the father of the sacred bands or tribes lived with his followers in the city of mists the middle place guarded by six warriors the prey gods toward the north he was guarded by longtail the mountain lion west by clumsy foot the bear south by black mark face the badger east by hangtail the wolf above by white cap the eagle below by mole so when he was about to go forth into the world he divided the earth into six regions north the direction of the swept or barren plains west the direction of the home of the waters south the place of the beautiful red east the direction of the home of day upper regions the direction of the home of the high lower regions the direction of the home of the low how old man above created the world shastika california long long ago when the world was so new that even the stars were dark it was very very flat chaiya old man above could not see through the dark to the new flat earth neither could he step down to it because it was so far below him with a large stone he bored a hole in the sky then through the hole he pushed down masses of ice and snow until a great pyramid rose from the plain old man above climbed down through the hole he had made in the sky stepping from cloud to cloud until he could put his foot on top the mass of ice and snow then with one long step he reached the earth the sun shone through the hole in the sky and began to melt the ice and snow it made holes in the ice and snow when it was soft chaiya bored with his fingers into the earth here and there and planted the first trees streams from the melting snow watered the new trees and made them grow then he gathered the leaves which fell from the trees and blew upon them they became birds he took a stick and broke it into pieces out of the small end he made fishes and placed them in the mountain streams of the middle of the stick he made all the animals except the grizzly bear from the big end of the stick came the grizzly bear who was made master of all grizzly was large and strong and cunning when the earth was new he walked upon two feet and carried a large club so strong was grizzly that old man above feared the creature he had made therefore so that he might be safe chariya hollowed out the pyramid of ice and snow as a tepee there he lived for thousands of snows the indians knew he lived there because they could see the smoke curling from the smoke hole of his tepee when the pale face came old man above went away there is no longer any smoke from the smoke hole white men call the tepee mount shasta end of part one Part Two of Myths and Legends of California and the Old Southwest by Catherine Barry Judson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part Two The Search for the Middle and the Hardening of the World. Zuni, New Mexico. As it was with the first men and creatures, so it was with the world. It was young and unripe earthquakes shook the world and rent it demons and monsters of the underworld fled forth creatures became fierce beasts of prey and others turned timid becoming their quarry wretchedness and hunger abounded and black magic fear was everywhere among them so the people in dread of their precious possessions became wanderers living on the seeds of grass eaters of dead and slain things yet guided by the beloved twain they sought in the light and under the pathway of the sun the middle of the world over which alone they could find the earth at rest when the tremblings grew still for a time the people paused at the first of sitting places yet they were still poor and defenceless and unskilled and the world still moist and unstable demons and monsters fled from the earth in times of shaking and threatened wanderers then the two took counsel of each other 
the elder said the earth must be made more stable for men and the valleys where their children rested if they sent down their firebolts of thunder aimed to all the four regions the earth would heave up and down fire would belch over the world and burn it floods of hot water would sweep over it and smoke would blacken the daylight but the earth would at last be safer for men so the beloved twain let fly the thunderbolts the mountains shook and trembled the plains cracked and crackled under the floods and fires and the hollow places the only refuge of men and creatures grew black and awful at last thick rain fell putting out the fires then water flooded the world cutting deep trails through the mountains and burying or uncovering the bodies of things and beings where they huddled together and were blasted thus their blood gushed forth and flowed deeply here in rivers there in floods for gigantic were they but the blood was charred and blistered and blackened by the fires into the black rocks of the lower mesas there were vast plains of dust ashes and cinders reddened like the mud of the hearth place yet many places behind and between the mountain terraces were unharmed by the fires and even then green grew the trees and grasses and even flowers bloomed then the earth became more stable and drier and its lone places less fearsome since monsters of prey were changed to rock but ever and again the earth trembled and the people were troubled let us again seek the middle they said so they travelled far eastward to their second stopping place the place of bare mountains again the world rumbled and they travelled into a country to a place called where tree bulls stand in the midst of waters there they remained long saying this is the middle they built homes there at times they met people who had gone before and thus they learned war and many strange things happened there as told in speeches of the ancient talk then when the earth groaned again the twain bade them go forth and they murmured many refused and perished miserably in their own homes as do rats in falling trees or flies in forbidden food but the greater number went forward until they came to steam mist in the midst of waters and they saw the smoke of men's hearth fires and many houses scattered over the hills before them when they came nearer they challenged the people rudely demanding who they were and why there for in their last standing place they had had touch of war we are the people of the seed said the men of the hearth fires born elder brothers of ye and led of the gods no said our fathers we are led of the gods and we are the seed people long lived the people in the town on the sunrise slope of the mountains of kulawan until the earth began to groan warningly again loath were they to leave the place of the kaka and the lake of their dead but the rumbling grew louder and the twain beloved called and altogether they journeyed eastward seeking once more the place of the middle but they grumbled among themselves so when they came to a place of great promise they said let us stay here perhaps it may be the place of the middle so they built houses there larger and stronger than ever before and more perfect for they were strong in numbers and wiser though yet unperfected as men they called the place the place of sacred stealing long they dwelt there happily but growing wiser and stronger so that with their tails and dressed in the skins of animals they saw they were rude and ugly in chase or in war they were at a disadvantage for they met older nations of men with whom they fought no longer they feared the gods and monsters but only their own kind so therefore the gods called a council changed shall ye be o our children cried the twain ye shall walk straight in the pathways clothed in garments and without tails that ye may sit more straight in council and without webs to your feet or talons on your hands 
so the people were arranged in procession like dancers and the twain with their weapons and fires of lightning shored off the forelocks hanging down over their faces severed the talons and slitted the webbed fingers and toes sore was the wounding and loud cried the foolish when lastly the people were arranged in procession for the raising of their tails but those who stood at the end of the line shrinking farther and farther fled in their terror climbing trees and high places with loud chatter wandering far sleeping ever in the treetops in the faraway summer land they were sometimes seen of far walkers long of tail and long-handed like wizened men children but the people grew in strength and became more perfect and more than ever went to war they grew vain they had reached the place of the middle they said let us not wearily wander forth again even though the earth tremble and the twain bid us forth and even as they spoke the mountain trembled and shook though far sounding but as the people changed changed also were the twain small and misshapen hard favoured and unyielding of will strong of spirit evil and bad they taught the people to war and led them far to the eastward at last the people neared in the middle of the plains to the eastward great towns built in the heights great were the fields and possessions of this people for they knew how to command and carry the waters bringing new soil and this too without hail or rain so our ancients hungry with long wandering for new food were the more greedy and often gave battle it was here that the ancient woman of the elder people who carried her heart in her rattle and was deathless of wounds in the body led the enemy crying out shrilly so it fell out ill for our fathers for moreover thunder raged and confused their warriors rain descended and blinded them stretching their bowstrings of sinew and quenching the flight of their arrows as the flight of bees is quenched by the sprinkling plume of the honey hunter but they devised bowstrings of yucca and the two little ones sought counsel of the sun father who revealed the life secret of the ancient woman and the magic powers over the under fires of the dwellers of the mountains so that our enemy in the mountain town was overmastered and because our people found in the great town some hidden deep in the cellars and pulled them out as rats and pulled from a hollow cedar and found them blackened by the fumes of their war magic yet wiser than the common people they spared them and received them into their next of kin of the black corn but the tremblings and warnings still sounded and the people searched for the stable middle now they called a great council of men and the beasts birds and insects of all kinds after a long council it was said where is water skate he has six legs all very long perhaps he can feel with them to the uttermost of the six regions and point out the very middle so water skate was summoned but lo it was the sun father in his likeness which appeared and he lifted himself to the zenith and extended his finger feet to all the six regions so that they touched the north the great waters the west and the south and the east the great waters and to the northeast the waters above and to the southwest the waters below but to the north his finger foot grew cold so he drew it in then gradually he settled down upon the earth and said where my heart rests mark a spot and build a town of the midmost for there shall be the midmost place of the earth mother and his heart rested over the middle of the plain and valley of zuni and when he drew his finger legs lo there were the trail roads leading out and in like stays of a spider's nest into and from the midmost place he had covered here because of their good fortune in finding the stable middle the priest father called the town the abiding place of happy fortune origin of light gali nomero russian river california in the earliest beginning the darkness was thick and deep there was no light the animals ran here and there always bumping into each other 
the birds flew here and there but continually knocked against each other hawk and coyote thought a long time about the darkness then coyote felt his way into a swamp and found a large number of dry tule reeds he made a ball of them he gave the ball to hawk with some flints and hawk flew up into the sky where he touched off the tule reeds and sent the bundle whirling around the world but still the nights were dark so coyote made another bundle of tule reeds and hawk flew into the air with them and touched them off with the flints but these reeds were damp and did not burn so well that is why the moon does not give so much light as the sun poco the old man paiute near kern river california poco old man they say created the world poco had many thoughts he had many blankets in which he carried around gifts for men he created every tribe out of the soil where they used to live that is why an indian wants to live and die in his native place he was made of the same soil poco did not wish men to wander and travel but to remain in their birthplace long ago sun was a man and was bad moon was good sun had a quiver full of arrows and they were deadly sun wishes to kill all things sun has two daughters venus and mercury and twenty men kill them but after fifty days they return to life again rainbow is the sister of poco and her breast is covered with flowers lightning strikes the ground and fills the flint with fire that is the origin of fire some say the beaver brought fire from the east hauling it on his broad flat tail that is why the beaver's tail has no hair on it even to this day it was burned off there are many worlds some have passed and some are still to come in one world the indians all creep in another they all walk in another they all fly perhaps in a world to come indians may walk on four legs or they may crawl like snakes or they may swim in the water like fish thunder and lightning my do near sacramento valley california great man created the world and all the people at first the earth was very hot so hot it was melted and that is why even today there is fire in the trunk and branches of trees and in the stones lightning is great man himself coming down swiftly from his world above and tearing apart the trees with his flaming arm thunder and lightning are two great spirits who try to destroy mankind but rainbow is a good spirit who speaks gently to them and persuades them to let the indians live a little longer creation of man my walk san joaquin valley california after coyote had completed making the world he began to think about creating man he called a council of all the animals the animal sat in a circle just as the indians do with lions at the head in an open space in the forest on lion's right was grizzly bear next cinnamon bear and so on to mouse who sat at lion's left lion spoke first lion said he wished man to have a terrible voice like himself so that he could frighten all animals he wanted man also to be well covered with hair with fangs in his claws and very strong teeth grizzly bear laughed he said it was ridiculous for anyone to have such a voice as lion because when he roared he frightened away the very prey for which he was searching but he said man should have very great strength that he should move silently but very swiftly and he should be able to seize his prey without noise buck said man would look foolish without antlers and a terrible voice was absurd but man should have ears like a spider's web and eyes like fire mountain sheep said the branching antlers would bother man if he got caught in a thicket if man had horns rolled up so that they were like a stone on each side of his head it would give his head weight enough to butt very hard when it came coyote's turn he said the other animals were foolish because they each wanted man to be just like themselves coyote was sure he could make a man who would look better than coyote himself or any other animal of course he would have to have four legs with five fingers 
man would have a strong voice but he need not roar all the time with it and he should have feet nearly like grizzly bears because he could then stand erect when he needed to grizzly bear had no tail and man should not have any the eyes and ears of buck were good and perhaps man should have those then there was fish which had no hair and hair was a burden much of the year so coyote thought man should not wear fur and his claws should be as long as the eagle's so that he could hold things in them but no animal was as cunning and crafty as coyote so man should have the wit of coyote then beaver talked beaver said man would have to have a tail but it should be broad and flat so he could haul mud and sand on it not a furry tail because they were troublesome on account of fleas owl said man would be useless without wings but mole said wings would be folly man would be sure to bump against the sky besides if he had wings and eyes both he would get his eyes burned out by flying too near the sun but without eyes he could burrow in the soft cool earth where he could be happy mouse said man needed eyes so he could see what he was eating and nobody wanted to burrow in the damp earth so the council broke up in a quarrel then every animal set to work to make a man according to his own ideas each one took a lump of earth and modelled it just like himself all but coyote for coyote began to make the kind of man he had talked of in the council it was late when the animal stopped work and fell asleep all but coyote for coyote was the cunningest of all the animals and he stayed awake until he had finished his model he worked hard all night when the other animals were fast asleep he threw water on the lumps of earth and so spoiled the models of the other animals but in the morning he finished his own and gave it life long before the others could finish theirs thus man was made by coyote the first man and woman nishinam near bear river california the first man created by coyote was called aikut his wife was yototowi but the woman grew sick and died i could dug a grave for her close beside his campfire for the nishinam did not burn their dead then all the light was gone from his life he wanted to die so he could follow yototowi and he fell into a deep sleep there was a rumbling sound and the spirit of yototowi rose from the earth and stood beside him he would have spoken to her but she forbade him for when an indian speaks to a ghost he dies then she turned away and set out for the dance house of ghosts i could followed her together they journeyed through a great dark country until they came to a river which separated them from the ghost land over the river there was a bridge of but one small rope so small that hardly spider could crawl across it here the woman started off alone but when i could stretched out his arms she returned then she started again over the bridge of thread and i could spoke to her so that he died thus together they journeyed to the spirit land old man above and the grizzlies shastika california a long time ago while smoke still curled from the smoke hole of the tepee a great storm arose the storm shook the tepee wind blew the smoke down the smoke hole old man above said to little daughter climb up to the smoke hole tell wind to be quiet stick your arm out of the smoke hole before you tell him little daughter climbed up to the smoke hole and put out her arm but little daughter put out her head also she wanted to see the world little daughter wanted to see the rivers and trees and the white foam on the bitter waters wind caught little daughter by the hair wind pulled her out of the smoke hole and blew her down the mountain wind blew little daughter over the smooth ice and the great forests down to the land of the grizzlies wind tangled her hair and then left her cold and shivering near the tepees of the grizzlies soon grizzly came home in those days grizzly walked on two feet and carried a big stick grizzly could talk as people do grizzly laid down the young elk he had killed and picked up little daughter he took little daughter to his tepee then mother grizzly warmed her by the fire 
mother grizzly gave her food to eat soon little daughter married the son of grizzly their children were not grizzlies they were men so the grizzlies built a tepee for little daughter and her children white men called the tepee little shasta at last mother grizzly sent a son to old man above mother grizzly knew that little daughter was the child of old man above but she was afraid she said tell old man above that little daughter is alive old man above climbed out of the smoke hole he ran down the mountain side to the land of the grizzlies old man above ran very quickly wherever he set his foot the snow melted the snow melted very quickly and made streams of water now grizzly stood in line to welcome old man above they stood on two feet and carried clubs then old man above saw his daughter and her children he saw the new race of men then old man above became very angry he said to grizzlies never speak again be silent neither shall ye stand upright ye shall use your hands as feet ye shall look downward then old man above put out the fire in the tepee smoke no longer curls from the smoke hole he fastened the door of the tepee the new race of men he drove out then old man above took little daughter back to his tepee that is why grizzlies walk on four feet and look downward only when fighting they stand on two feet and use their fists like men the creation of mankind and the flood pima arizona after the world was ready earth doctor made all kinds of animals and creeping things then he made images of clay and told them to be people after a while there were so many people that there was not food and water enough for all they were never sick and none died at last there grew to be so many they were obliged to eat each other then earth doctor because he could not give them food and water enough killed them all he caught the hook of his staff into the sky and pulled it down so that it crushed all the people and all the animals until there was nothing living on the earth earth doctor made a hole through the earth with his stick and through that he went coming out safe but alone on the other side he called upon the sun and moon to come out of the wreck of the world and sky and they did so but there was no sky for them to travel through no stars and no milky way so earth doctor made these all over again then he created another race of men and animals then coyote was born moon was his mother when coyote was large and strong he came to the land where the pima indians lived then elder brother was born earth was his mother and sky his father he was so powerful that he spoke roughly to earth doctor who trembled before him the people began to increase in numbers just as they had done before but elder brother shortened their lives so the earth did not become so crowded but elder brother did not like the people created by earth doctor so he planned to destroy them again so elder brother planned to create a magic baby the screams of the baby shook the earth they could be heard for a great distance then earth doctor called all the people together and told them there would be a great flood he sang a magic song and then bored a hole through the flat earth plain through to the other side some of the people went into the hole to escape the flood that was coming but not very many got through some of the people asked elder brother to help them but he did not answer only coyote he answered he told coyote to find a big log and sit on it so that he would float on the surface of the water with the driftwood elder brother got into a big olla which he had made and closed it tight so he rolled along on the ground under the olla he sang a magic song as he climbed into his olla a young man went to the place where the baby was screaming its tears were a great torrent which cut gorges in the earth before it the water was rising all over the earth he bent over the child to pick it up and immediately both became birds and flew above the flood only five birds were saved from the flood one was a flicker and one a vulture 
they clung by their beaks to the sky to keep themselves above the waters but the tail of the flicker was washed by the waves and that is why it is stiff to this day at last a god took pity on them and gave them power to make nests of down from their own breasts on which they floated on the water one of these birds was the vipismal and if any one injures it to this day the flood may come again now south doctor called his people to him and told them that a flood was coming he sang a magic song and he bored a hole in the ground with a cane so that people might go through to the other side others he sent to earth doctor but earth doctor told them they were too late so they sent the people to the top of a high mountain called crooked mountain south doctor sang a magic song and traced his cane along the mountain but that held back the waters only for a short time four times he sang and traced a line around the mountains yet the flood rose again each time there was only one thing more to do he held his magic crystals in his left hand and sang a song then he struck it with his cane a thunder peal rang through the mountains he threw his staff into the water and it cracked with a loud noise turning he saw a dog near him he said how high is the tide the dog said it is very near the top he looked at the people as he said it when they heard his voice they all turned to stone they stood just where they were and they are there to this day in groups some of the men talking some of the women cooking and some crying but earth doctor escaped by enclosing himself in his reed staff which floated upon the water elder brother rolled along in his ola until he came near the mouth of the colorado river the ola is now called black mountain after the flood he came out and visited all parts of the land when he met coyote and earth doctor each claimed to have been the first to appear after the flood but at last they admitted elder brother was the first so he became ruler of the world end of part two part three of myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine barry judson this librivox recording is in the public domain part three the birds and the flood pima arizona once upon a time when all the earth was flooded two birds were hanging above the water they were clinging to the sky with their beaks the larger bird was gray with a long tail and beak but the smaller one was the tiny bird that builds a nest shaped like an ola with only a very small opening at the top the birds were tired and frightened the larger one cried and cried but the little bird held on tight and said don't cry i'm littler than you are but i'm very brave legend of the flood ashokimi coast indians california long ago there was a great flood which destroyed all the people in the world only coyote was saved when the water subsided the earth was empty coyote thought about it a long time then coyote collected a great bundle of tail feathers from owls hawks eagles and buzzards he journeyed over the whole earth and carefully located the site of each indian village where the tepees had stood he planted a feather in the ground and scraped up the dirt around it the feathers sprouted like trees and grew up and branched at last they turned into men and women so the world was inhabited with people again the great flood sia new mexico for a long time after the fight the people were very happy but the ninth year was very bad the whole earth was filled with water the water did not fall in rain but came in as rivers between the mesas it continued to flow in from all sides until the people and the animals fled to the mesa tops the water continued to rise until nearly level with the tops of the mesas then susistinaco cried where shall my people go where is the road to the north he looked to the north where is the road to the west where is the road to the east where is the road to the south he looked in each direction and he said i see the waters are everywhere all of the medicine men sang four days and four nights but still the waters continued to rise 
then spider placed a huge reed upon the top of the mesa he said my people will pass up through this to the world above utset led the way carrying a sack in which were many of the star people the medicine men followed carrying sacred things in sacred blankets on their backs then came the people and the animals and the snakes and birds the turkey was far behind and the foam of the water rose and reached the tip end of his feathers you may know that is true because even to this day they bear the mark of the waters when they reached the top of the great reed the earth which formed the floor of the world above barred their way utset called to locust man come here locust went to her she said you know best how to pass through the earth go and make a door for us very well mother said locust i think i can make a way he began working with his feet and after a while he passed through the earthly floor entering the upper world as soon as he saw it he said to utset it is good above utset called badger and said make a door for us sika the locust has made one but it is very small very well mother i will said badger after much work he passed into the world above and said mother i have opened the way badger also said father mother the world above is good utset then called deer she said you go through first if you get your head through others may pass the deer returned saying father it is all right i passed without trouble utset called elk she said you pass through if you can get your head and horns through the door all may pass ulk returned saying father it is good i passed without trouble then utset told the buffalo to try and he returned saying father mother the door is good i passed without trouble utset called the scarab beetle and gave him the sack of stars telling him to pass out first with them scarab did not know what the sack contained but he was very small and grew tired carrying it he wondered what could be in the sack after entering the new world he was so tired he laid down the sack and peeped into it he cut only a small hole but at once the star people flew out and filled the heavens everywhere then utset and all the people came and after turkey passed the door was closed with a great rock so that the waters from below could not follow them then utset looked for the sack with the star people she found it nearly empty and could not tell where the stars had gone the little beetle sat by very much frightened and very sad but utset was angry and said you are bad and disobedient from this time forth you shall be blind that is the reason the scarabaeus has no eyes so the old ones say but the little fellow had saved a few of the stars by grasping the sack and holding it fast utset placed these in the heavens in one group she placed seven the great bear in another three in another group she placed the pleiades and threw the others far off into the sky the flood and the theft of fire tolowa del norte county california a long time ago there came a great rain it lasted a long time and the waters kept rising till all the valleys were submerged and the indian tribes fled to the highlands but the water rose and though the indians fled to the highest point all were swept away and drowned all but one man and one woman they reached the very highest peak and were saved these two indians ate the fish from the waters around them then the waters subsided all the game was gone and all the animals but the children of these two indians when they died became the spirits of deer and bear and insects and so the animals and insects came back to the earth again the indians had no fire the flood had put out all the fires in the world they looked at the moon and wished they could secure fire from it then the spider indians and the snake indians formed a plan to steal fire the spiders wove a very light balloon and fastened it by a long rope to the earth then they climbed into the balloon and started for the moon but the indians of the moon were suspicious of the earth indians the spiders said we came to gamble the moon indians were much pleased and all the spider indians began to gamble with them they sat by the fire 
then the snake indian sent a man to climb up the long rope from the earth to the moon he climbed the rope and darted through the fire before the moon indians understood what he had done then he slid down the rope to earth again as soon as he touched the earth he travelled over the rocks the trees and the dry sticks lying upon the ground giving fire to each everything he touched contained fire so the world became bright again as it was before the flood when the spider indians came down to earth again they were immediately put to death for the tribes were afraid the moon indians might want revenge legend of the flood in sacramento valley maidu near sacramento valley california long long ago the indians living in sacramento valley were happy suddenly there came the swift sound of rushing waters and the valley became like big waters which no man can measure the indians fled but many slept beneath the waves also the frogs and the salmon pursued them and they ate many indians only two who fled into the foothills escaped to these two great man gave many children and many tribes arose but one great chief ruled all the nation the chief went out upon a wide knoll overlooking the big waters and he knew that the plains of his people were beneath the waves nine sleeps he lay on the knoll thinking thoughts of these great waters nine sleeps he lay without food and his mind was thinking always of one thing how did this deep water cover the plains of the world at the end of nine sleeps he was changed he was not like himself no arrow could wound him he was like great man for no indian could slay him then he spoke to great man and commanded him to banish the waters from the plains of his ancestors great man tore a hole in the mountain side so that the waters on the plains flowed into big waters thus the sacramento river was formed the fable of the animals carroc near klamath river california a great many hundred snows ago Kariya, sitting on the sacred stool created the world first he made the fishes in the big water then the animals on the green land and last of all man but at first the animals were all alike in power no one knew which animals should be food for others and which should be food for man then Kariya ordered them all to meet in one place that man might give each his rank and his power so the animals all met together one evening when the sun was set to wait overnight for the coming of man on the next morning Kariya also commanded man to make bows and arrows as many as there were animals and to give the longest one to the animal which was to have the most power and the shortest to the one which would have the least power so he did and after nine sleeps his work was ended and the bows and arrows which he had made were very many now the animals being all together went to sleep so they might be ready to meet man on the next morning but coyote was exceedingly cunning he was cunning above all the beasts coyote wanted the longest bow and the greatest power so he could have all the other animals for his meat he decided to stay awake all night so that he could be first to meet man in the morning so he laughed to himself and stretched his nose out on his paw and pretended to sleep about midnight he began to be sleepy he had to walk around the camp and scratch his eyes to keep them open he grew more sleepy so that he had to skip and jump about to keep awake but he made so much noise he awakened some of the other animals when the morning star came up he was too sleepy to keep his eyes open any longer so he took two little sticks and sharpened them at the ends and propped open his eyelids then he felt safe he watched the morning star with his nose stretched along his paws and fell asleep the sharp sticks pinned his eyelids fast together the morning star rose rapidly into the sky the birds began to sing the animals woke up and stretched themselves but still coyote lay fast asleep when the sun rose the animals went to meet man he gave the longest bow to cougar so he had greatest power the second longest he gave to bear others he gave to the other animals giving all but the last to frog but the shortest one was left man cried out what animal have i missed 
then the animals began to look about and found coyote fast asleep with his eyelids pinned together all the animals began to laugh and they jumped upon coyote and danced upon him then they led him to man still blinded and man pulled out the sharp sticks and gave him the shortest bow of all it would hardly shoot an arrow farther than a foot all the animals laughed but man took pity on coyote because he was now weaker even than frog so at his request Kariya gave him cunning ten times more than before so that he was cunning above all the animals of the wood therefore coyote was friendly to man and his children and did many things for them coyote and son paiute near kern river california a long time ago coyote wanted to go to the sun he asked poco old man to show him the trail coyote went straight out on this trail and he traveled it all day but sun went round so that coyote came back at night to the place from which he started in the morning the next morning coyote asked poco to show him the trail poco showed him and coyote traveled all day and came back at night to the same place again but the third day coyote started early and went out on the trail to the edge of the world and sat down on the hole where the sun came up while waiting for the sun he pointed with his bow and arrow at different places and pretended to shoot he also pretended not to see the sun when sun came up he told coyote to get out of his way coyote told him to go around that it was his trail but sun came up under him and he had to hitch forward a little after sun came up a little farther it began to get hot on coyote's shoulder so he spit on his paw and rubbed his shoulder then he wanted to ride up with the sun sun said oh no but coyote insisted so coyote climbed up on sun and sun started up the trail in the sky the trail was marked off into steps like a ladder as sun went up he counted one two three and so on by and by coyote became very thirsty and he asked sun for a drink of water sun gave him an acorn cup full coyote asked him why he had no more about noontime coyote became very impatient it was very hot sun told him to shut his eyes coyote shut them but opened them again he kept opening and shutting them all the afternoon at night when the sun came down coyote took hold of a tree then he clambered off sun and climbed down to the earth the course of the sun Sia, New Mexico. Sosistinaco, the spider, said to the sun, My son, you will ascend and pass over the world above. You will go from north to south. Return and tell me what you think of it. The son said on his return, Mother, I did as you bade me, and I did not like the road. Spider told him to ascend and pass over the world from west to east. On his return, the son said, it may be good for some mother but i did not like it spider said you will again ascend and pass over the straight road from the east to the west return and tell me what you think of it that night the son said i am much contented i like that road much so sustenaco said my son you will ascend each day and pass over the world from east to west upon each day's journey the sun stops midway from the east to the center of the world to eat his breakfast in the center he stops to eat his dinner halfway from the center to the west he stops to eat his supper he never fails to eat these three meals each day and always stops at the same points the sun wears a shirt of dressed deerskin with leggings of the same reaching to his thighs the shirt and leggings are fringed his moccasins are also of deerskin and embroidered in yellow red and turkish beads he wears a kilt of deerskin having a snake painted upon it he carries a bow and arrows the quiver being of cougar skin hanging over his shoulder and he holds his bow in his left hand and an arrow in his right he always wears the mask which protects him from the sight of the people of haarts at the top of the mask is an eagle plume with parrot plumes an eagle plume is at each side and one at the bottom of the mask 
the hair around the head and face is red like fire and when it moves and shakes people cannot look closely at the mask it is not intended that they should observe closely else they would know that instead of seeing the sun they see only his mask the moon came to the upper world with the sun and he also wears a mask each night the sun passes by the house of sosistinaco the spider who asks him how are my children above how many have died to-day how many have been born to-day the sun lingers only long enough to answer his questions he then passes on to his house in the east the foxes and the sun uruk near klamath river california once upon a time the foxes were angry with sun they held a council about the matter then twelve foxes were selected twelve of the bravest to catch sun and tie him down they made ropes of sinew then the twelve watched until the sun as he followed the downward trail in the sky touched the top of a certain hill then the foxes caught sun and tied him fast to the hill but the indians saw them and they killed the foxes with arrows then they cut the sinews but the sun had burned a great hole in the ground the indians know the story is true because they can see the hole where sun burned the theft of fire Karak, near klamath river california there was no fire on earth and the Karaks were cold and miserable far away to the east hidden in a treasure box was fire which Karia had made and given to two old hags lest the Karaks should steal it so coyote decided to steal fire for the indians coyote called a great council of the animals after the council he stationed a line from the land of the Karaks to the distant land where the fire was kept lion was nearest the fire land and frog was nearest the Karak land lion was strongest and frog was weakest and the other animals took their places according to the power given them by man then coyote took an indian with him and went to the hilltop but he hid the indian under the hill coyote went to the tepee of the hags he said good evening and they replied good evening coyote said it is cold out here can you let me sit by the fire so they let him sit by the fire he was only a coyote he stretched his nose out along his forepaws and pretended to go to sleep but he kept the corner of one eye open watching so he spent all night watching and thinking but he had no chance to get a piece of the fire the next morning coyote held a council with the indian he told him when he coyote was within the tepee to attack it then coyote went back to the fire the hags let him in again he was only a coyote but coyote stood close by the casket of fire the indian made a dash at the tepee the hags rushed out after him and coyote seized a firebrand in his teeth and flew over the ground the hags saw the sparks flying and gave chase but coyote reached lion who ran with it to grizzly bear grizzly bear ran with it to cinnamon bear he ran with it to wolf and at last the fire came to ground squirrel squirrel took the brand and ran so fast that his tail caught fire he curled it up over his back and burned the black spot on his shoulder you can see it even today squirrel came along to frog but frog couldn't run he opened his mouth wide and swallowed the fire then he jumped but the hags caught his tail frog jumped again but the hags kept his tail that is why frogs have no tail even to this day frog swam under water and came up on a pile of driftwood he spat out the fire into the dry wood and that is why there is fire in dry wood even today when an indian rubs two pieces together the fire comes out the theft of fire Sia, new mexico a long long time ago the people became tired of feeding on grass like deer and wild animals and they talked together how fire might be found the tiamoni said coyote is the best man to steal fire from the world below so he sent for coyote when coyote came the tiamoni said the people wish for fire we are tired of feeding on grass you must go to the world below and bring the fire coyote said it is well father i will go so coyote slipped stealthily to the house of sosistinaco it was the middle of the night 
snake who guarded the first door was asleep and he slipped quickly and quietly by cougar who guarded the second door was asleep and coyote slipped by bear who guarded the third door was also sleeping at the fourth door coyote found the guardian of the fire asleep slipping through into the room of sosistinaco he found him also sleeping coyote quickly lighted a cedar brand which was attached to his tail and hurried out spider awoke just enough to know some one was leaving the room who is there he cried and then he called some one has been here but before he could waken the sleeping bear and cougar and snake coyote had almost reached the upper world the earth hardening after the flood sia new mexico after the flood the sia returned to haarts the earth they came through an opening in the far north after they had remained at their first village a year they wished to pass on but the earth was very moist and utset was puzzled how to harden it utset called cougar she said have you any medicine to harden the road so that we may pass over it cougar replied i will try mother but after going a short distance over the road he sank to his shoulders in the wet earth he returned much afraid and told utset that he could go no farther then she sent for bear she said have you any medicine to harden the road bear started out but he sank to his shoulders and returned saying i can do nothing then utset called badger and he tried she called shrew and he failed she called wolf and he failed then utset returned to the lower world and asked sosistinaco what she could do to harden the earth so that her people might travel over it he asked have you no medicine to make the earth firm have you asked cougar and wolf bear and badger and wolf to use their medicines and harden the earth utset said i have tried all these then sosistinaco said others will understand he told her to have a woman of the Kapina spider clan try to harden the earth when the woman arrived utset said my mother sasistanako tells me the Kapino society understand how to harden the earth the woman said i do not know how to make the earth hard three times utset asked the woman about hardening the earth and three times the woman said i do not know the fourth time the woman said well i guess i know i will try so she called together the members of the spider society the Kapina, and said our mother sasistinaco bids us work for her and harden the earth so that the people may pass over it the spider woman first made a road of fine cotton which she produced from her own body and suspended it a few feet above the earth then she told the people they could travel on that but the people were afraid to trust themselves to such a frail road then utset said i wish a man and not a woman of the spider society to work for me then he came he threw out a charm of wood latticed so that it could be expanded or contracted when it was extended it reached to the middle of the earth he threw it to the south to the east and to the west and then he threw it toward the people in the north so the earth was made firm that the people might travel upon it soon after utset said i will soon leave you i will return to the home from which i came then she selected a man of the corn clan she said to him you will be known as tiamoni arch ruler you will be to my people as myself you will pass with them over the straight road i give you all my wisdom my thoughts my heart and all i fill your mind with my mind he replied it is well mother i will do as you say end of part three part four of myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine barry judson this librivox recording is in the public domain part four the origins of the totems and of names zuni new mexico now the twain beloved and the priest fathers gathered in council for the naming and selection of man groups and creature kinds and things so they called the people of the southern space the children of summer and those who loved the sun most became the sun people 
others who loved the water became the toad people or turtle people or frog people others loved the seeds of the earth and became the seed people or the people of the first growing grass or of the tobacco those who loved warmth were the fire or badger people according to their natures they chose their totems and so also did the people of winter or the people of the north some were known as the bear people or the coyote people or deer people others as the crane people turkey people or grouse people so the badger people dwelt in a warm place even as the badgers on the sunny side of hillsborough finding a dwelling amongst the dry roots whence is fire tradition of wanderings hopi arizona after the hopi had been taught to build stone houses they took separate ways my people were the snake people they lived in snake skins each family occupying a separate snake skin bag all were hung on the end of a rainbow which swung around until the end touched navajo mountain then the bags dropped from it wherever a bag dropped there was their house after they arranged their bags they came out from them as men and women and they then built a stone house which had five sides then a brilliant star arose in the southeast it would shine for a while and disappear the old men said beneath that star there must be people they decided to travel to it they cut a staff and set it in the ground and watched until the star reached its top then they started and traveled as long as the star shone when it disappeared they halted but the star did not shine every night sometimes many years passed before it appeared again when this occurred the people built houses during their halt they built round houses and square houses and all the ruins between here and navajo mountain marked the places where our people lived they waited until the star came to the top of the staff again but when they moved on many people remained in those houses when our people reached waipo a spring a few miles from walpi the star vanished it has never been seen since they built a house there but masawu the god of the face of the earth came and compelled the people to move about halfway between the east mesa and the middle mesa and there they stayed many plantings one time when the old men were assembled the god came among them looking like a horrible skeleton and rattling his bones but he could not frighten them so he said i have lost my wager all that i have is yours ask for anything you want and i will give it to you at that time our people's house was beside the watercourse the god said why do you sit there in the mud go up yonder where it is dry so they went across to the west side of the mesa near the point and built a house and lived there again when the old men assembled two demons came among them but the old men took the great bajo and chased them away other hopi hopita came into this country from time to time and old people said build here or build there and portioned the land among the newcomers the migration of the water people walpi arizona in the long ago the snake horn and eagle people lived here in tusayan but their corn grew only a span high and when they sang for rain the cloud god sent only a thin mist my people lived then in the distant palakwatibi in the south there was a very bad old man there when he met any one he would spit in their faces he did all manner of evil baholingohanga got angry at this and turned the world upside down water spouted up through the kivas and through the fireplaces in the houses the earth was rent in great chasms and water covered everything except one narrow ridge of mud across this the serpent god told all the people to travel as they journeyed across the feet of the bad slipped and they fell into the dark water the good people after many days reached dry land while the water was rising around the village the old people got on top of the houses they thought they could not struggle across with the younger people but baholingohanga clothed them with the skins of turkeys they spread their wings out and floated in the air just above the surface of the water and in this way they got across 
there were saved of us the water people the corn people the lizard horned toad and sand people two families of rabbit and the tobacco people the turkey tail dragged in the water that is why there is white on the turkey's tail now this is also the reason why old people use turkey feathers at the religious ceremonies coyote and the mesquite beans pima arizona after the waters of the flood had gone down elder brother said to coyote do not touch that black bug and do not eat that mesquite beans it is dangerous to harm anything that came safe through the flood so coyote went on but presently he came to the black bug he stopped and ate it up then he went on to the mesquite beans he stopped and looked at them a while and then said i will just taste one and that will be all but he stood there and ate and ate until he had eaten them all up and the bug and the beans swelled up in his stomach and killed him origin of the sierra nevadas and coast range Yokuts near fresno california once there was a time when there was nothing in the world but water about the place where tulare lake is now there was a pole standing far up out of the water and on this pole perched hawk and crow first hawk would sit on the pole a while then crow would knock him off and sit on it himself thus they sat on the top of the pole above the water for many ages at last they created the birds which prey on fish they created kingfisher eagle pelican and others they created also duck duck was very small but she dived to the bottom of the water took a beak full of mud and then died in coming to the top of the water duck lay dead floating on the water then hawk and crow took the mud from duck's beak and began making the mountains they began at the place now known as Tahichapa Pass, and Hawk made the east range, Crow made the west one. They pushed the mud down hard into the water and then piled it high. They worked toward the north. At last Hawk and Crow met at Mount Shasta. Then their work was done, but when they looked at their mountains, Crow's range was much larger than Hawk's. Hawk said to Crow, how did this happen you rascal you have been stealing earth from my bill that is why your mountains are the biggest crow laughed then hawk chewed some indian tobacco that made him wise at once he took hold of the mountains and turned them around almost in a circle he put his range where crows had been that is why the sierra nevada range is larger than the coast range yosemite valley explanatory mr stephen powers claims that there is no such word in the miwok language as yosemite the valley has always been known to them and is to this day when speaking among themselves as awani this it is true is only the name of one of the ancient villages which it contained but by prominence it gave its name to the valley and in accordance with indian usage almost everywhere to the inhabitants of the same the word yosemite is simply a very beautiful and sonorous corruption of the word for grizzly bear on the stanislaus and north of it the word is uzumaiti in little gap osomaiti in yosemite itself uzumaiti on the south fork of the merced ozumaita in the following list the signification of the name is given whenever there is any known to the indians Wakala, the river, Merced River. Lunguptukuya, ribbon fall. Pohono, Pohono, though the first is probably the more correct. Bridal Veil Fall. This word is said to signify evil wind. The only evil wind that an Indian knows of is a whirlwind, which is Poicha or Kanuma. Tutok o Nula el capitan measuring worm stone legend is given elsewhere kosuko cathedral rock posina and chuka the squirrel and the acorn cache a tall sharp needle with a smaller one at its base just east of cathedral rock the savages imagined here a squirrel nibbling at the base of an acorn granary loya sentinel rock sakadu sentinel dome cholok 
the fall yosemite fall this is the generic word for fall mata the canyon indian canyon a generic word in explaining which the indians hold up both hands to denote perpendicular walls hamoko usually contracted to hamok broken debris lying at the foot of the walls uzumaiti la wata grizzly bear skin glacier rock from the grayish grizzled appearance of the wall choco nipate baby basket royal arches this canopy rock bears no little resemblance to an indian baby basket another form is choco ni literally dog house piwayak white water vernal fall yowayi nevada fall in this word is detected the root of awai a lake or body of water tisiyak south dome see legend elsewhere tokoye north dome husband of tisiyak see legend elsewhere shunta hunta the eye watching eye awaya a lake mirror lake sawa a gap a name occurring frequently wahaka a village which stood at the base of three brothers also the rock itself this was the westernmost village in the valley there were nine villages in yosemite valley and formerly others extending as far down as the bridal veil fall which were destroyed in wars that occurred before the whites came footnote the explanation given above is that made by mr stephen powers in volume three u s geographical and geological survey of the rocky mountain region part two contributions to north american ethnology eighteen seventy seven and footnote legend of tulaca nula el capitan yosemite valley here were once two little boys living in the valley who went down to the river to swim after paddling and splashing about to their heart's content they went on shore and crept up on a huge boulder which stood beside the water they lay down in the warm sunshine to dry themselves but fell asleep they slept so soundly that they knew nothing though the great boulder grew day by day and rose night by night until it lifted them up beyond the sight of their tribe who looked for them everywhere the rock grew until the boys were lifted high into the heaven even far above the blue sky until they scraped their faces against the moon and still year after year among the clouds they slept then there was held a great council of all the animals to bring the boys down from the top of the great rock every animal leaped as high as he could up the face of the rocky wall mouse could only jump as high as one's hand rat twice as high then raccoon tried he could jump a little farther one after another of the animals tried and grizzly bear made a great leap far up the wall but fell back last of all lion tried and he jumped farther than any other animal but fell back down upon his back then came tiny measuring worm and began to creep up the rock soon he reached as high as raccoon had jumped then as high as bear then as high as lion's leap and by and by he was out of sight climbing up the face of the rock for one whole snow measuring worm climbed the rock and at last he reached the top then he wakened the boys and came down the same way he went up and brought them down safely to the ground thereafter the rock is called tutokanula the measuring worm but white men call it el capitan legend of tisayak south dome and north dome yosemite valley tisayak and her husband journeyed from a country very far off and entered the valley of the yosemite footsore from travel she bore a great heavy conical basket strapped across her head tisayak came first her husband followed with a rude staff and a light roll of skins on his back they were thirsty after their long journey across the mountains they hurried forward to drink of the waters and the woman was still in advance when she reached lake iowa then she dipped up the water in her basket and drank of it she drank up all the water the lake was dry before her husband reached it and because the woman drank all the water there came a drought the earth dried up there was no grass nor any green thing but the man was angry because he had no water to drink 
he beat the woman with his staff and she fled but he followed and beat her even more then the woman wept in her anger she turned and flung her basket at the man and even then they were changed into stone the woman's basket lies upturned beside the man the woman's face is tear-stained with long dark lines trailing down south dome is the woman and north dome is the husband the indian woman cuts her hair straight across the forehead and allows the sides to drop along her cheeks forming a square face historic tradition of the upper tuolumne yosemite valley as given by mr stephen powers eighteen seventy seven there is a lake-like expansion of the upper tuolumne some four miles long and from a half mile to a mile wide directly north of hatchikatchi valley erroneously spelled hetch hetchy it appears to have no name among americans but the indians call it owayano which is manifestly a dialect variation of awaa the generic term for lake nat screech a veteran mountaineer and hunter states that he visited this region in eighteen fifty and at that time there was a valley along the river having the same dimensions that this lake now has again in eighteen fifty five he happened to pass that way and discovered that the lake had been formed as it now exists he was at a loss to account for its origin but subsequently he acquired the miwok language as spoken at little gap and while listening to the indians one day he overheard them casually refer to the formation of this lake in an extraordinary manner on being questioned they stated that there had been a tremendous cataclysm in that valley the bottom of it having fallen out apparently whereby the entire valley was submerged in the waters of the river as nearly as he could ascertain from their imperfect methods of reckoning time this occurred in eighteen fifty one and in that year while in the town of sonora screech and many others remembered to have heard a huge explosion in that direction which they then supposed was caused by a local earthquake on drew's ranch middle fork of the tuolumne lives an aged squaw called dishi who was in the valley when this remarkable event occurred according to her account the earth dropped in beneath their feet and waters of the river leaped up and came rushing upon them in a vast roaring flood almost perpendicular like a wall of rock at first the indians were stricken dumb and motionless with terror but when they saw the waters coming they escaped for life though thirty or forty were overtaken and drowned another squaw named isabel says that the stubs of trees which are still plainly visible deep down in the pellucid waters are considered by the old superstitious indians to be evil spirits the demons of the place reaching up their arms and that they fear them greatly footnote volume three part two u s geographical and geological survey of the rocky mountain region contributions to north american ethnology eighteen seventy seven end note california big trees paiutes near kern river california the california big trees are sacred to the monos who call them wowona a word formed in imitation of the hoot of the owl the owl is the guardian spirit and the god of the big trees bad luck comes to those who cut down the big trees or shoot at an owl or shoot in the presence of the owl in old days the indians tried to persuade the white men not to cut down the big trees when they see the trees cut down they call after the white men they say the owl will bring them evil the children of cloud pima arizona when the hohokam dwelt in the gila river and tilled their farms around the great temple which we call casa grande there was a beautiful young woman in the pueblo who had two twin sons their father was cloud and he lived far away one day the boys came to their mother as she was weaving mats who is our father they asked we have no one to run to when he returns from the hunt or from war to shout to him the mother answered in the morning look toward the sunrise and you will see a white cloud standing upright he is your father can we visit our father they asked yes said their mother you may visit him but you must make the journey without stopping first you will reach wind who is your father's eldest brother behind him you will find your father 
the boys travelled four days and came to the house of wind are you our father they asked no i am your uncle answered wind your father lives in the next house go on to him they travelled on to cloud but cloud drove them away he said go to your uncle wind he will tell you something but wind sent them back to cloud again thus the boys were driven away from each house four times then cloud said to them prove to me you are my sons if you are you can do what i do the younger boys sent chain lightning across the sky with sharp crackling thunder the elder boys sent the heat lightning with its distant rumble of thunder you are my children said cloud you have power like mine but again he tested them he took them to a house nearby where a flood of rain had drowned the people if they are my sons he said they will not be harmed then cloud sent the rain and the storm the water rose higher and higher but the two boys were not harmed the water would not drown them then cloud took them to his home and there they stayed a long long time but after a long time the boys wished to see their mother again then cloud made them some bows and arrows differing from any they had ever seen and sent them to their mother he told them he would watch over them as they travelled but they must speak to no one they met on their way so the boys travelled to the setting sun first they met raven they remembered their father's command and turned aside so as not to meet him then they met road runner and turned aside to avoid him next came hawk and eagle eagle said let's scare those boys so he swooped down over their heads until they cried from fright we were just teasing you said eagle we will not do you any harm then eagle flew on next they met coyote they tried to avoid him but coyote ran around and put himself in their way cloud was watching and he sent down thunder and lightning and the boys sent out their magic thunder and lightning also until coyote was frightened and ran away now this happened on the mountain top and one boy was standing on each side of the trail after coyote ran away they were changed into mescal the very largest mescal ever known the place was near tucson this is the reason why mescal grows on the mountains and why thunder and lightning go from place to place because the children did that is why it rains when we gather mescal the cloud people sia new mexico now all the cloud people the lightning people the thunder and rainbow peoples followed the Sia into the upper world. But all the people of Tinia, the middle world, did not leave the lower world. Only a portion were sent by the spider to work for the people of the upper world. The cloud people are so many that, although the demands of the earth people are so great, there are always many passing about over Tinia for pleasure. These cloud people ride on wheels, small wheels being used by the little cloud children, and large wheels by the older ones the cloud people keep always behind their masks the shape of the mask depends upon the number of the people and the work being done the henity are the floating white clouds behind which the cloud people pass for pleasure the heesh are clouds like the plains and behind these the cloud people are laboring to water the earth water is brought by the cloud people from the springs at the base of the mountains in gourds and jugs and vases by the men women and children they rise from the springs and pass through the trunks of the tree to its top which reaches tinea they pass on to the point to be sprinkled the priest of the cloud people is above even the priests of the thunder lightning and rainbow peoples the cloud people have ceremonials just like those of the sia on the altars of the sia may be seen figures arranged just as the cloud people sit in their ceremonials when a priest of the cloud people wishes assistance from the thunder and lightning peoples he notifies their priests but keeps a supervision of all things himself then the lightning people shoot their arrows to make it rain the harder the smaller flashes come from the bows of the children the thunder people have human forms with wings of knives and by flapping these wings they make a great noise thus they frighten the cloud and lightning people into working the harder the rainbow people were created to work in tinea to make it more beautiful for the people of haarts the earth to look upon the elders make the beautiful rainbows but the children assist 
the sia have no idea of what or how these bows are made they do know however that war heroes always travel upon the rainbows footnote the indians say the americans also ride wheels therefore they must have known about the cloud people End note. rain song sia new mexico we the ancient ones ascended from the middle of the world below through the door of the entrance to the lower world we hold our songs to the cloud lightning and thunder peoples as we hold our own hearts our medicine is precious addressing the people of tinia we entreat you to send your thoughts to us so that we may sing your song straight so that they will pass over the straight road to the cloud priests that they may cover the earth with water so that she may bear all that is good for us lightning people send your arrows to the middle of the earth hear the echo who is it the people of the spruce of the north all your people and your thoughts come to us who is it people of the white floating clouds your thoughts come to us all your people and your thoughts come to us who is it the lightning people your thoughts come to us who is it cloud people at the horizon all your people and your thoughts come to us rain song white floating clouds clouds like the plains come and water the earth sun embrace the earth that she may be fruitful moon lion of the north bear of the west badger of the south wolf of the east eagle of the heavens shrew of the earth elder war hero younger war hero warriors of the six mountains of the world intercede with the cloud people for us that they may water the earth medicine bowl cloud bowl and water vase give us your hearts that the earth may be watered i make the ancient road of meal that my song may pass straight over it the ancient road white shell bead woman who lives where the sun goes down mother whirlwind father susestinaco mother yaya creator of good thoughts yellow woman of the north blue woman of the west red woman of the south white woman of the east slightly yellow woman of the zenith and dark woman of the nadir i ask your intercession with the cloud people rain song sia new mexico let the white floating clouds the clouds like the plains the lightning thunder rainbow and cloud peoples water the earth let the people of the white floating clouds the people of the clouds like the plains the lightning thunder rainbow and cloud peoples come and work for us and water the earth end of part four part five of myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine berry judson this librivox recording is in the public domain part five the corn maidens zuni new mexico after long ages of wandering the precious seed things rested over the middle at zuni and men turned their hearts to the cherishing of their corn and the corn maidens instead of warring with strange men but there was complaint by the people of the customs followed some said the music was not that of the olden time far better was that which of nights they often heard as they wandered up and down the river trail wonderful music as of liquid voices in caverns or the echo of women's laughter in water vases and the music was timed with a deep-toned drum from the mountain of thunder others thought the music was that of the ghosts of ancient men but it was far more beautiful than the music when danced the corn maidens others said light clouds rolled upward from the grotto in thunder mountain like to the mists that leave behind them the dew but lo even as they faded the bright garments of the rainbow women might be seen fluttering and the broidery and paintings of these dancers of the mist were more beautiful than the costumes of the corn maidens then the priests of the people said it may well be payatuma the liquid voices his flute and the flutes of his players 
now when the time of ripening corn was near the fathers ordered preparation for the dance of the corn maidens they sent the two master priests of the bow to the grotto at thunder mountain saying if you behold payatuma and his maidens perhaps they will give us the help of their customs then up the river trail the priests heard the sound of a drum and strains of song it was payatuma and his seven maidens the maidens of the house of stars sisters of the corn maidens the god of dawn and music lifted his flute and took his place in the line of dancers the drum sounded until the cavern shook as with thunder the flutes sang and sighed as the wind in a wooded canyon while still the storm is distant white mists floated up from the wands of the maidens above which fluttered the butterflies of summerland about the dress of the rainbows in the strange blue light of the night then payatuma smiling said go the way before telling the fathers of our custom and straightway we will follow soon the sound of music was heard coming up from the river and soon the flute people and singers and maidens of the flute dance up rose the fathers and all the watching people greeting the god of dawn with outstretched hand and offering of prayer meal then the singers took their places and sounded their drum flutes and song of clear waters while the maidens of the dew danced their flute dance greatly marvelled the people when from the wands they bore forth came white clouds and fine cool mists descended now when the dance was ended and the dew maidens had retired out came the beautiful mothers of corn and when the players of the flute saw them they were enamoured of their beauty and gazed upon them so intently that the maidens let fall their hair and cast down their eyes and jealous and bolder grew the mortal youths and in the morning dawn in rivalry the dancers sought all too freely the presence of the corn maidens no longer holding them so precious as in the olden time and the matrons intent on the new dance heeded naught else but behold the mists increased greatly surrounding dancers and watchers alike until within them the maidens of corn all in white garments became invisible then sadly and noiselessly they stole in amongst the people and laid their corn wands down amongst the trays and laid their white broidered garments thereupon as mothers lay soft kilting over their babes then even as the mists became they and with the mists drifting fled away to the far south summer land footnote the mists and dawn breeze on the river and in the grotto End footnote. the search for the corn maidens zuni new mexico then the people in their trouble called the two master priests and said who now think ye should journey to seek our precious maidens bethink ye who amongst the beings is even as ye are strong of will and good of eyes there is our great elder brother and father eagle he of the floating down and of the terraced tail fan surely he is enduring of will and surpassing of sight yea most surely said the fathers go ye forth and beseech him then the two sped north to twin mountain where in a grotto high up among the crags with his mate and young dwelt the eagle of the white bonnet they climbed the mountain but behold only the eaglets were there they screamed lustily and tried to hide themselves in the dark recesses pull not our feathers ye of hurtful touch but wait when we are older we will drop them for you even from the clouds hush said the warriors wait in peace we seek not ye but thy father then from afar with a frown came old eagle why disturb ye my featherlings he cried behold father and elder brother we come seeking only the light of thy favour listen then they told him of the lost maidens of the corn and begged him to search for them be it well with thy wishes said eagle go ye before contentedly so the warriors returned to the council but eagle winged his way high into the sky high high he rose until he circled among the clouds small seeming and swift like seed down in a whirlwind through all the heights to the north to the west to the south and to the east he circled and sailed yet nowhere saw he trace of the corn maidens 
then he flew lower returning before the warriors were rested people heard the roar of his wings as he alighted the father said enter thou and sit o brother and say to us what thou hast to say and they offered him the cigarette of the space relations when they had puffed the smoke toward the four points of the compass and eagle had purified his breath with smoke and had blown smoke over sacred things he spoke far have i journeyed scanning all the regions neither bluebird nor wood rat can hide from my seeing he said snapping his beak neither of them unless they hide under bushes yet i have failed to see anything of the maidens ye seek for send for my younger brother the falcon strong of flight is he yet not so strong as i and nearer the ground he takes his way ere sunrise then the eagle spread his wings and flew away to twin mountain the warrior priests of the bow sped again fleetly over the plain to the westward for his younger brother falcon sitting on an ant hill so the warriors found falcon he paused as they approached crying if ye have snare strings i will be off like the flight of an arrow well plumed of our feathers no said the priest thy elder brother hath bidden us seek thee then they told falcon what had happened and how eagle had failed to find the corn maidens so white and beautiful failed said falcon of course he failed he climbs aloft to the clouds and thinks he can see under every bush and into every shadow as sees the sun father who sees not with eyes go ye before before the warrior priest had turned toward the town the falcon had spread his sharp wings and was skimming off over the tops of the trees and bushes as though verily seeking for field mice or birds nests and the warriors returned to tell the fathers and to await his coming but after falcon had searched over the world to the north and west to the east and south he too returned and was received as had been eagle he settled on the edge of a tray before the altar as on the ant hill he settles to-day when he had smoked and had been smoked as had been eagle he told the sorrowing fathers and mothers that he had looked behind every copse and cliff shadow but of the maidens he had found no trace they are hidden more closely than ever sparrow hid he said then he too flew away to his hills in the west our beautiful maiden mothers cried the matrons lost lost as the dead are they yes said the others where now shall we seek them the far-seeing eagle and the close-searching falcon alike have failed to find them stay now your feet with patience said the fathers some of them had heard raven who sought food in the refuse and dirt at the edge of town at daybreak look now they said there is heavy nose whose beak never fails to find the substance of seed itself however little or well hidden it be he surely must know of the corn maidens let us call him so the warriors went to the riverside when they found raven they raised their hands all weaponless we carry no pricking quills they called black banded father we seek your aid look now the mother maidens of seed whose substance is the food alike of thy people and our people have fled away neither our grandfather the eagle nor his younger brother the falcon can trace them we beg you to aid us or counsel us ka ka cried the raven too hungry am i to go abroad fasting on business for ye ye are stingy here have i been since perching time trying to find a throatful but ye pick thy bones and lick thy bowls too clean for that be sure come in then poor grandfather we will give thee food to eat yea and a cigarette to smoke with all the ceremony say ye so said the raven he ruffled his collar and opened his mouth so wide with a lusty caw la caw that he might well have swallowed his own head go ye before he said and followed them into the court of the dancers he was not ill to look upon upon his shoulders were bands of white cotton and his back was blue gleaming like the hair of a maiden dancer in the sunlight the master priest greeted raven bidding him sit and smoke ha there is corn in this else why the stalk of it 
said the raven when he took the cane cigarette for the far spaces and noticed the joint of it then he did as he had seen the master priest do only more greedily he sucked in such a throatful of the smoke fire and all that it almost strangled him he coughed and grew giddy and the smoke all hot and stinging went through every part of him it filled all his feathers making even his brown eyes bluer and blacker in rings it is not to be wondered at the blueness of flesh blackness of dress and skinniness yes and tearfulness of eye which we see in the raven to-day and they are all as greedy of corn food as ever for behold no sooner had the old raven recovered than he espied one of the ears of corn half hidden under the mantel covers of the trays he leaped from his place laughing they always laugh when they find anything these ravens then he caught up the ear of corn and made off with it over the heads of the people and tops of the houses crying ha ha in this wise and in no other will ye find thy seed maidens but after a while he came back saying a sharp eye have i for the flesh of the maidens but who might see their breathing beings ye dolts except by the help of the father of dawn mist himself whose breath makes breath of others seem as itself then he flew away cawing then the elders said to each other it is our fault so how dare we prevail on our father Pyatuma to aid us he warned us of this in the old time suddenly for the sun was rising they heard Pyatuma in his daylight mood and transformation thoughtless and loud uncouth in speech he walked along the outskirts of the village he joked fearlessly even of fearful things for all his words and deeds were the reverse of his sacred being he sat down on a heap of vile refuse saying he would have a feast my poor little children he said but he spoke to aged priests and white-haired matrons good night to you all he said though it was in full dawning so he perplexed them with his speeches we beseech thy favour o father and thy aid in finding our beautiful maidens so the priests mourned oh that is all is it but why find that which is not lost or summon those who will not come then he reproached them for not preparing the sacred plumes and picked up the very plumes he had said were not there then the wise pequina the speaker of the sun took two plumes and the banded wing-tips of the turkey and approached by a tuma, stroked him with the tips of the feathers and then laid the feathers upon his lips then Pyatuma became aged and grand and straight as is a tall tree shorn by lightning he said to the father thou art wise of thought and good of heart therefore i will summon from summer land the beautiful maidens that ye may look upon them once more and make offering of plumes in sacrifice for them but they are lost as dwellers amongst ye then he told them of the song lines and the sacred speeches and of the offering of the sacred plume wands and then turned him about and sped away so fleetly that none saw him beyond the first valley of the high plain to the southward Pyatuma planted the four plume wands first he planted the yellow bending over it and watching it when it ceased to flutter the soft down on it leaned northward but moved not then he set the blue wand and watched it and then the white wand the eagle down on them leaned to the right and left and still northward yet moved not then farther on he planted the red wand and bending low without breathing watched it closely the soft down plumes began to wave as though blown by the breath of some small creature backward and forward northward and southward they swayed as if in time to the breath of one resting tis the breath of thy maidens in summerland for the plumes of the southland sway soft to their gentle breathing so shall it ever be when i set the down of my mists on the plain and scatter my bright beads in the northland summer shall go thither from afar borne on the breath of the seed maidens where they breathe warmth showers and fertility shall follow with the birds of summerland and the butterflies northward over the world 
then Payatuma arose and sped by the magic of his knowledge into the countries of summerland fled swiftly and silently as the soft breath he sought for bearing his painted flute before him and when he paused to rest he played on his painted flute and the butterflies and birds sought him so he sent them to seek the maidens following swiftly and long before he found them he greeted them with the music of his song sound even as the people of the seed now greet them in the song of the dancers when the maidens heard his music and saw his tall form in their great fields of corn they plucked ears each of her own kind and with them filled their coloured trays and over all spread embroidered mantles embroidered in all the bright colours and with the creature songs of summerland so they sallied forth to meet him and welcome him then he greeted them each with the touch of his hands and the breath of his flute and bade them follow him to the northland home of their deserted children so by the magic of their knowledge they sped back as the stars speed over the world at night-time toward the home of our ancients only at night and dawn they journeyed as the dead do and the stars also so they came at evening in the full of the last moon to the place of the middle bearing their trays of seed glorious was Payatuma as he walked into the courts of the dancers in the dusk of the evening and stood with folded arms at the foot of the bow-fringed ladder of priestly council he and his follower shutsukya he was tall and beautiful and banded with his own mists and carried the banded wings of the turkey with which he had winged his flight from afar leading the maidens and followed as by his own shadow by the black being of the corn soot shutsukya who cries with the voice of the frost wind when the corn has grown aged and the harvest is taken away and surpassingly beautiful were the maidens clothed in the white cotton and embroidered garments of summerland then after long praying and chanting by the priests the fathers of the people and those of the seed and water and the keepers of sacred things the maiden mother of the north advanced to the foot of the ladder she lifted from her head the beautiful tray of yellow corn and payatuma took it he pointed it to the regions each in turn and the priest of the north came and received the tray of sacred seed then the maiden of the west advanced and gave up her tray of blue corn so each in turn the maidens gave up their trays of precious seed the maiden of the south the red seed the maiden of the east the white seed then the maiden with the black seed and lastly the tray of all colour seed which the priestess of seed and all herself received and now behold the maidens stood as before she of the north at the northern end but with her face southward far looking she of the west next and lo so all of them with the seventh and last looking southward and standing thus the darkness of the night fell around them as shadows in deep night so these maidens of the seed of corn the beloved and beautiful were seen no more of men and Payatuma stood alone, for Shutsukya walked now behind the maidens, whistling shrilly, as the frost wind whistles when the corn is gathered away among the lone canes and dry leaves of a gleaned field. Hostielti and Hostiogon, Navajo, New Mexico Hostielti was the son of the white corn, and Hostiogon the son of the yellow corn they were born on the mountains where the fogs meet these two became the great song-makers of the world to the mountain where they were born henry mountain utah they gave two songs and two prayers then they went to sierra blanca colorado and made two songs and prayers and dressed the mountain in clothing of white shell with two eagle plumes upon its head they visited san mateo mountain new mexico and gave to it two songs and prayers and dressed it in turquoise even to leggings and moccasins and placed two eagle plumes upon its head then they went to san francisco mountain arizona and made two songs and prayers and dressed that mountain in abalone shells with two eagle plumes upon its head 
then they visited ute mountain and gave to it two songs and prayers and dressed it in black beads then they returned to their own mountain where the fogs meet and said we too have made all these songs other brothers were born of the white corn and yellow corn and two brothers were placed on each mountain they are the spirits of the mountains and to them the clouds come first all the brothers together made game the deer and elk and buffalo and so game was created navajos pray for rain and snow to hashielti and hosyogan they stand upon the mountain tops and call the clouds to gather around them hashielti prays to the sun for the navajos father give me the light of your mind that my mind may be strong give me your strength that my arm may be strong give me your rays that corn and other vegetation may grow the most important prayers are addressed to hashielti and the most valuable gifts made to him he talks to the navajos through the birds and for this reason the choicest feathers and plumes are placed in the cigarettes and attached to the prayer sticks offered to him the song hunter navajo new mexico a man sat thinking let me see my songs are too short i want more songs where shall i go to find them hasielti appeared and perceiving his thoughts said i know where you can get more songs well i want to get more so i will follow you they went to a certain point in a box canyon in the big colorado river and here they found four gods the host jobokan at work hewing cottonwood logs hasielti said this will not do cottonwood becomes water-soaked you must use pine instead of cottonwood the hosjobokan began boring the pine with flint but ajelti said that is slow work he commanded a whirlwind to hollow the log a cross joining at the exact middle of each log a solid one and the hollow one was formed the arms of the cross were equal the song hunter entered the hollow log and has yelthi closed the end with a cloud so that the water would not enter when the logs were launched upon the great waters the logs floated off the host jobokan accompanied by their wives rode upon the logs one couple sitting upon each arm has yelthi host jobokan and the two naskiti walked upon the banks to keep the logs off shore Hasjelti carried a squirrel skin filled with tobacco with which to supply the gods on their journey hostjobokan carried a staff ornamented with eagle and turkey plumes and a gaming ring with two hummingbirds tied to it with white cotton cord the two naskiti carried staffs of lightning the naskiti had clouds upon their backs in which the seeds of all corn and grasses were carried after floating a long distance down the river they came to waters that had a shore on one side only here they landed here they found a people like themselves when these people learned of the song hunter they gave him many songs and they painted pictures on a cotton blanket and said these pictures must go with the songs if we give this blanket to you you will lose it we will give you white earth and black coals which you will grind together to make black paint and we will give you white sand yellow sand and red sand for the blue paint you will take the white sand and black coals with a very little red and yellow sand these will give you blue and so the navajo people make blue even to this day the song hunter remained with the people until the corn was ripe there he learned to eat corn and he carried some back with him to the navajos who had not seen corn before and he taught them how to raise it and how to eat it when he wished to return home the logs would not float upstream four sunbeams attached themselves to the logs one to each cross arm and so drew the song hunter back to the box canyon from which he had started when he reached that point he separated the logs he placed the end of the solid log into the hollow end of the other and planted this great pole in the river it may be seen there to-day by the venturesome in early days many went there to pray and make offerings sand painting of the song hunter navajo 
explanatory of frontispiece the black crossbars denote pine logs the white lines the froth of the water the yellow vegetable debris gathered by the logs the blue and red lines sunbeams the blue spot in the centre of the cross denotes water there are four hostjeboken with their wives the hostjeboard each couple sits upon one of the cross arms of the logs the gods carry in their right hands a rattle and in their left sprigs of pinion the goddesses carry pinion sprigs in both hands hasielti is to the east of the painting he carries a squirrel skin filled with tobacco his shirt is white cotton and very elastic the leggings are of white deerskin fringed and his head is ornamented with an eagle's tail at the tip of each plume there is a fluffy feather from the breast of the eagle the projection on the right of the throat is a fox skin hostjogan is at the west his shirt is invisible the dark being the dark of the body his staff is colored black from a charred plant two strips of beaver skin tipped with six quills of the porcupine are attached to the right of the throat the four colored stars on the body are bead ornaments the top of the staff is ornamented with a turkey's tail eagle and turkey plumes are alternately attached to the staff the naskidi are north and south of the painting they carry staffs of lightning ornamented with eagle plumes and sunbeams their bodies are nude except the loin skirt the hunch upon the back is a black cloud and the three groups of white lines indicate corn and other seeds five eagle plumes are attached to the cloud back since eagles live among the clouds the body is surrounded by sunlight the lines of blue and red which border the cloud back denote sunbeams penetrating storm clouds the black circle zigzagged with white around the head is a cloud basket filled with corn and seeds of grass on each side of the head are five feathers of the red shafted flicker the rainbow goddess upon which these gods often travel partly encircles and completes the picture these sand pictures are drawn upon common yellow sand brought in blankets and laid in squares about three inches thick and four feet in diameter the colors used in decoration were yellow red and white secured from sandstones black from charcoal and a grayish blue made from white sand and charcoal mixed with a very small quantity of yellow and red sands from eighth annual report of the bureau of ethnology abridged from description of james stevenson end of part five part six of myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine barry judson this librivox recording is in the public domain part six the guiding duck and the lake of death zuni new mexico now kayaklu the all-hearing and wise of speech all alone had been journeying afar in the northland of cold and white loneliness he was lost for the world in which he wandered was buried in the snow which lies spread there for ever so cold he was that his face became wan and white from the frozen mists of his own breath white as become all creatures who dwell there so cold at night and dreary of heart so lost by day and blinded by the light was he that he wept and died of heart and became transformed as are the gods yet his lips called continually and his voice grew shrill and dry sounding like the voice of far-flying waterfowl as he cried wandering blindly the water birds flocking around him peered curiously at him calling meanwhile to their comrades but wise though he was of all speeches and their meaning plain to him yet none told him the way to his country and people now the duck heard his cry and it was like her own she was of all regions the traveller and searcher knowing all the ways whether above or below the waters whether in the north the west the south or the east and was the most knowing of all creatures thus the wisdom of the one understood the knowledge of the other 
and the all-wise cried to her the mountains are white and the valleys all plains are like others in whiteness and even the light of our father the sun makes all ways more hidden of whiteness in brightness my eyes see but darkness the duck answered think no longer sad thoughts thou hearest all as i see all give me tinkling shells from thy girdle and place them on my neck and in my beak i may guide thee with my seeing if thou hear and follow my trail well i know the way to thy country each year i lead thither the wild geese and the cranes who flee there as winter follows so the all-wise placed his talking shells on the neck of the duck and the singing shells in her beak and though painfully and lamely yet he followed the sound she made with the shells from place to place with swift flight she sped then awaiting him ducking her head that the shells might call loudly by and by they came to the country of thick rains and mists on the borders of the snow world and passed from water to water until wider water lay in their path in vain the duck called and jingled the shells from the midst of the waters kayaklu could neither swim nor fly as could the duck now the rainbow worm was near in that land of mists and waters and he heard the sound of the sacred shells these be my grandchildren he said and called why mourn ye give me plumes of the spaces i will bear you on my shoulders then the all-wise took two of the lightest plume wands and the duck her two strong feathers and he fastened them together and breathed on them while the rainbow worm drew near the rainbow unbent himself that kayaklu might mount then he arched himself high among the clouds like an arrow he straightened himself forward and followed until his face looked into the lake of the ancients and there the all-wise descended and sat there alone in the plain beyond the mountains the duck had spread her wings in flight to the south to take counsel with the gods then the duck even as the gods had directed prepared a litter of poles and reeds and before the morning came with the litter they went singing a quaint and pleasant song down the northern plain and when they found the all-wise he looked upon them in the starlight and wept but the father of the gods stood over him and chanted the sad dirge rite then kalakyu sat down in the great soft litter they bore for him they lifted it upon their shoulders bearing it lightly singing loudly as they went to the shores of the deep black lake where gleamed from the middle the lights of the dead out over the magic ladder of rushes and canes which reared itself over the water they bore him and kalaklu scattering sacred prayer meal before him stepped down the way slowly like a blind man no sooner had he taken four steps than the ladder lowered into the deep and the all-wise entered the council room of the gods the gods sent out their runners to summon all beings and called in dancers for the dance of good and with these came the little ones who had sunk beneath the waters well and beautiful and all seemingly clad in cotton mantles and precious neck jewels the boy who became a god navajo new mexico the tolchini a clan of the navajos lived at wind mountains one of them used to take long visits into the country his brothers thought he was crazy the first time on his return he brought with him a pine bough the second time corn each time he returned he brought something new and had a strange story to tell his brother said he's crazy he does not know what he is talking about now the tolchini left wind mountains and went to a rocky foothill east of the san mateo mountain they had nothing to eat but seed grass the eldest brother said let us go hunting but they told the youngest brother not to leave camp but five days and five nights passed and there was no word so he followed them after a day's travel he camped near a canyon in a cave-like place there was much snow but no water so he made a fire and heated a rock and made a hole in the ground the hot rock heated the snow and gave him water to drink 
just then he heard a tumult over his head like people passing he went out to see what made the noise and saw many crows crossing back and forth over the canyon this was the home of the crow but there were other feathered people there and the chaparral cock he saw many fires made by the crows on each side of the canyon two crows flew down near him and the youth listened to hear what was the matter the two crows cried out somebody says somebody says the youth did not know what to make of this a crow on the opposite side called out what is the matter tell us tell us what is wrong the first two cried out two of us got killed we met two of our men who told us then they told the crows how two men who were out hunting killed twelve deer and a party of the crow people went to the deer after they were shot they said two of us who went after the blood of the deer were shot the crows on the other side of the canyon called which men got killed the chaparral cock who sat on the horn of the deer and the crow who sat on its backbone the others called out we are not surprised they were killed that is what we tell you all the time if you go after dead deer you must expect to be killed we will not think of them longer so the two crows replied they are dead and gone we are talking of things of long ago but the youth sat quietly below and listened to everything that was said after a while the crows on the other side of the canyon made a great noise and began to dance they had many songs at that time the youth listened all the time after the dance a great fire was made and he could see black objects moving but he could not distinguish any people he recognized the voice of hazelti he remembered everything in his heart he even remembered the words of the songs that continued all night he remembered every word of every song he said to himself i will listen until daylight the crow people did not remain on the side of the canyon where the fires were first built they crossed and recrossed the canyon in their dance they danced back and forth until daylight then all the crows and the other birds flew away to the west all that was left was the fires and the smoke then the youth started for his brother's camp they saw him coming and they said he will have lots of stories to tell he will say he saw something no one ever saw but the brother-in-law who was with them said let him alone when he comes into camp he will tell us all i believe these things do happen for he could not make up these things all the time now the camp was surrounded by pinion brush and a large fire was burning in the center there was much meat roasting over the fire when the youth reached the camp he raked over the coals and said i feel cold brother-in-law replied it is cold when people camp together they tell stories to one another in the morning we have told ours now you tell yours the youth said where i stopped last night was the worst camp i ever had the brothers paid no attention but the brother-in-law listened the youth said i never heard such a noise then he told his story brother-in-law asked what kind of people made the noise the youth said i do not know they were strange people to me but they danced all night back and forth across the canyon and i heard them say my brothers killed twelve deer and afterwards killed two of their people who went for the blood of the deer i heard them say that is what must be expected if you go to such places you must expect to be killed the elder brother began thinking he said how many deer did you say were killed twelve elder brother said i never believed you before but this story i do believe how do you find out all these things what is the matter with you that you know them the boy said i do not know they come into my mind and to my eyes then they started homeward carrying the meat the youth helped them as they were descending a mesa they sat down on the edge to rest far down the mesa were four mountain sheep the brothers told the youth to kill one the youth hid in the sagebrush and when the sheep came directly toward him he aimed his arrow at them but his arm stiffened and became dead the sheep passed by he then headed them off again by hiding in the stalks of a large yucca the sheep passed within five steps of him but again his arm stiffened as he drew the bow 
he followed the sheep and got ahead of them and hid behind a birch tree in bloom he had his bow ready but as they neared him they became gods the first was hazielti the second was hostyogan the third naskidi and the fourth hadatjizi then the youth fell senseless to the ground the four gods stood one on each side of him each with a rattle they traced with their rattles in the sand the figure of a man drawing lines at his head and feet then the youth recovered and the gods again became sheep they said why did you try to shoot us you see you are one of us for the youth had become a sheep the gods said there is to be a dance far off to the north beyond the ute mountain we want you to go with us we will dress you like ourselves and teach you to dance then we will wander over the world now the brothers watched from the top of the mesa but they could not see what the trouble was they saw the youth lying on the ground but when they reached the place all the sheep were gone they began crying saying for a long time we would not believe him and now he has gone off with the sheep they tried to head off the sheep but failed they said if we had believed him he would not have gone off with this sheep but perhaps some day we will see him again at the dance the five sheep found seven others this made their number twelve they journeyed all around the world all people let them see their dances and learn their songs then the eleven talked together and said there is no use keeping this youth with us longer he has learned everything he may as well go back to his people and teach them to do as we do so the youth was taught to have twelve in the dance six gods and six goddesses with hajelti to lead them he was told to have his people make masks to represent the gods so the youth returned to his brothers carrying with him all songs all medicines and clothing origin of clear lake patuan sacramento valley california before anything was created at all old frog and old badger lived alone together old badger wanted to drink so old frog gnawed into a tree drew out all the sap and put it in a hollow place then he created little frogs to help him and working together they dug out the lake then old frog made the little flat white fish some of them lived in the lake but others swam down cache creek and turned into the salmon pike and sturgeon which swim in the sacramento the great fire patwin sacramento valley california long ago a man loved two women and wished to marry both of them but the women were magpies and they laughed at him therefore the man went to the north and made for himself a tule boat then he set the world on fire and himself escaped to sea in his boat but the fire burned with terrible speed it ate its way into the south it licked up all things on earth men trees rocks animals water and even the ground itself now old coyote saw the burning and the smoke from his place far in the south and he ran with all his might to put it out he put two little boys in a sack and ran north like the wind he took honeydew into his mouth chewed it up spat on the fire and so put it out now the fire was out but there was no water and coyote was thirsty so he took indian sugar again chewed it up dug a hole in the bottom of the creek covered up the sugar in it and it turned to water and filled the creek so the earth had water again but the two little boys cried because they were lonesome for there was nobody left on earth then coyote made a sweat house and split a number of sticks and laid them in the sweat house overnight in the morning they had all turned into men and women origin of the raven and the macaw totems of summer and winter zuni new mexico the priest who was named yanao luha carried over in his hand a staff which now in the daylight was plumed and covered with feathers yellow blue green red white black and varied attached to it were shells which made a song-like tinkle the people when they saw it stretched out their hands and asked many questions 
then the priest balanced it in his hand and struck with it a hard place and blew upon it amid the plumes appeared four round things mere eggs they were two were blue like the sky and two dun red like the flesh of the earth mother then the people asked many questions these said the priests are the seed of living things choose which ye will follow from two eggs shall come beings of beautiful plumage coloured like the grass and fruits of summer where they fly and ye follow shall always be summer without toil fields of food shall flourish and from the other two eggs shall flow evil beings piebald with white without colours and where these two shall fly and ye shall follow winter strives with summer only by labour shall the fields yield fruit and your children and theirs shall strive for the fruits which do ye choose the blue the blue cried the people and those who were strongest carried off the blue eggs leaving the red eggs to those who waited they laid the blue eggs with much gentleness in soft sand on the sunny side of a hill watching day by day they were precious of colour surely they would be the precious birds of the summer land then the eggs cracked and the birds came out with open eyes and pin feathers under their skins we chose wisely said the people yellow and blue red and green are their dresses even seen through their skins so they fed them freely of all the foods which men favour thus they taught them to eat all desirable food but when the feathers appeared they were black with white bandings they were ravens and they flew away croaking hoarse laughs and mocking our fathers but the other eggs became beautiful macaws and were wafted by a toss of the priest's wand to the far-away summer land so those who had chosen the raven became the raven people they were the winter people and they were many and strong but those who had chosen the macaw became the macaw people they were the summer people and few in number and less strong but they were wiser because they were more deliberate the priest yanaluha being wise became their father even as the sun father is among the little moons of the sky he and his sisters were the ancestors of the priest keepers of things coyote and the hare sia new mexico one day coyote was passing about when he saw a hare sitting before his house coyote thought in a minute i will catch you and he sprang and caught hare hare cried man coyote do not eat me wait just a minute i have something to tell you something you will be glad to hear something you must hear well said coyote i will wait let me sit at the entrance of my house said hare then i can talk to you coyote allowed hare to take his seat at the entrance hare said what are you thinking of coyote nothing said coyote listen then said hare i am a hare and i am very much afraid of people when they come carrying arrows i am afraid of them when they see me they aim their arrows at me and i am afraid and oh how i tremble hare began trembling violently until he saw coyote a little off his guard then he began to run it took coyote a minute to think and then he ran after hare but always a little behind hare raced away and soon entered a house just in time to escape coyote coyote tried to enter the house but found it was hard stone he became very angry coyote cried i was very stupid why did i allow this hare to fool me i must have him but this house is so strong how can i open it coyote began to work but after a while he said to himself the stone is so strong i cannot open it presently hare called man coyote how are you going to kill me i know how said coyote i will kill you with fire where is the wood asked hare for he knew there was no wood at his house i will bring grass said coyote and set fire to it the fire will enter your house and kill you oh said hare but the grass is mine it is my food it will not kill me it is my friend the grass will not kill me then coyote said i will bring all the trees of the wood and set fire to them 
all the trees know me said hare they are my friends they will not kill me they are my food coyote thought a minute and then he said i will bring the gum of the pinion and set fire to that hare said now i am afraid i do not eat that it is not my friend coyote rejoiced that he had thought of a plan for getting the hare he hurried and brought all the gum he could carry and placed it at the door of hare's house and set fire to it in a short time the gum boiled like hot grease and hare cried now i know i shall die what shall i do yet all the time he knew what he would do but coyote was glad hare was afraid after a while hare called the fire is entering my house and coyote answered blow it out but coyote drew near and blew with all his might to blow the flame into hare's house hare cried you are so close you are blowing the fire on me and i will soon be burned coyote was so happy that he drew closer and blew harder and drew still closer so that his face was very close to hare's face then hare suddenly threw the boiling gum into coyote's face and escaped from his house it took coyote a long time to remove the gum from his face and he felt very sorrowful he said i am very very stupid coyote and the quails pima arizona once upon a time long ago coyote was sleeping so soundly that a covey of quails came along and cut pieces of fat meat out of his flesh without arousing him then they went on after they had camped for the evening and were cooking the meat coyote came up the trail coyote said where did you get that nice fat meat give me some quails gave him all he wanted then he went further up the trail after he had gone a little way quails called to him coyote you are eating your own flesh coyote said what did you say quails said oh nothing we heard something calling behind the mountains soon the quails called again coyote you ate your own meat what did you say oh nothing we heard somebody pounding his grindstone so coyote went on but at last he began to feel where he had been cut then he knew what the quails meant he turned back down the trail and told quails he would eat them up he began to chase them the quails flew above ground and coyote ran about under them at last they got tired but coyote did not because he was so angry by and by quails came to a hole and one of the keenest witted picked up a piece of prickly chola cactus and pushed it into the hole then they all ran in after it but coyote dug out the hole and reached them when he came to the first quail he said was it you who told me i ate my own flesh and quail said no so coyote let him go and he flew away when coyote came to the second quail he asked the same question and quail said no and then flew away so coyote asked every quail until the last quail was gone and then he came to the cactus branch now the prickly cactus branch was so covered with feathers that it looked just like a quail coyote asked it the same question but the cactus branch did not answer then coyote said i know it was you because you do not answer so coyote bit very hard into the hard prickly branch and it killed him coyote and the fawns sia new mexico another day when he was traveling around coyote met a deer with two fawns the fawns were beautifully spotted and he said to the deer how did you paint your children they are so beautiful deer replied i painted them with fire from the cedar and how did you do the work asked coyote i put my children into a cave and built a fire of cedar in front of it every time a spark flew from the fire it struck my children making a beautiful spot oh said coyote i will do the same thing then i will make my children beautiful he hurried to his house and put his children in a cave then he built a fire of cedar in front of it and stood off to watch the fire but the children cried because the fire was very hot coyote kept calling to them not to cry because they would be beautiful like the deer 
after a time the crying ceased and coyote was pleased but when the fire died down he found they were burned to death coyote expected to find them beautiful but instead they were dead then he was enraged with the deer and ran away to hunt her but he could not find her anywhere he was much distressed to think the deer had fooled him so easily how the bluebird got its color pima arizona a long time ago the bluebird was a very ugly color but bluebird knew of a lake where no river flowed in or out and he bathed in this four times every morning for four mornings every morning he sang a magic song there's a blue water it lies there i went in i am all blue on the fourth morning bluebird shed all his feathers and came out of the lake just in his skin but the next morning when he came out of the lake he was covered with blue feathers now all this while coyote had been watching bluebird he wanted to jump in and get him to eat but he was afraid of the water but on that last morning coyote said how is it you have lost all your ugly color and now you are blue and gay and beautiful you are more beautiful than anything that flies in the air i want to be blue too now coyote at that time was a bright green i only went in four times on four mornings said bluebird he taught coyote the magic song and he went in four times and the fifth time he came out as blue as the little bird then coyote was very very proud because he was a blue coyote he was so proud that as he walked along he looked around on every side to see if anybody was looking at him now that he was a blue coyote and so beautiful he looked to see if his shadow was blue too but coyote was so busy watching to see if others were noticing him that he did not watch the trail by and by he ran into a stump so hard that it threw him down in the dirt and he was covered with dust all over you may know this is true because even today coyotes are the color of dirt coyote's eyes pima arizona when coyote was traveling about one day he saw a small bird the bird was hopping about contentedly and coyote thought what a beautiful bird it moves about so gracefully he drew nearer to the bird and asked what beautiful things are you working with but the bird could not understand coyote after a while the bird took out his two eyes and threw them straight up into the air like two stones it looked upward but had no eyes then the bird said come my eyes come quickly down into my head the eyes fell down into the bird's head just where they belonged but they were much brighter than before coyote thought he could brighten his eyes he asked the bird to take out his eyes the bird took out coyote's eyes and held them for a moment in his hands and threw them straight up into the air coyote looked up and called come back my eyes come quickly they at once fell back into his head and were much brighter than before coyote wanted to try it again but the bird did not wish to but coyote persisted then the bird said why should i work for you coyote no i will work no more for you but coyote still persisted and the bird took out his eyes and threw them up coyote cried come my eyes come back to me but his eyes continued to rise into the air and the bird began to go away coyote began to weep but the bird was annoyed and called back go away now i am tired of you go away and get other eyes but coyote refused to go and entreated the bird to find eyes for him at last the bird gathered gum from a pinion tree and rolled it between his hands and put it in coyote's eye holes so that he could see but his eyes had been black and very bright his new eyes were yellow now said the bird go away you cannot stay here any longer End of part six Part seven of Myths and Legends of California and the Old Southwest by Catherine Barry Judson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part seven Coyote and the Tortillas 
Pima, Arizona. Once upon a time, a river rose very high and spread all over the land. An Indian woman was going along the trail by the riverside with a basket of tortillas on her head, but she was wading in water up to her waist. Now Coyote was afraid of the water, so he had climbed into a cottonwood tree. When the woman came up the trail, Coyote called, Oh, come to this tree and give me some of those nice tortillas. The woman said, No, I can't give them to you. They are for somebody else. If you do not come here, I will shoot you, said Coyote, and the woman really thought he had a bow. So she came to the tree and said, You must come down and get them. I can't climb trees. Coyote came down as far as he dared, but he was afraid of the deep water. The woman laughed at him. She said, just see how shallow it is it's only up to my ankles but she was standing on a big stump coyote looked at the water it seemed shallow and safe enough so he jumped but the water was deep and he was drowned then the woman went on up the trail coyote as a hunter sia new mexico coyote traveled a long distance and in the middle of the day it was very hot he sat down and rested and thought as he looked up to tenia how i wish the cloud people would refresh in my path and make it cool in just a little while the cloud people gathered over the trail coyote was following and he was glad that his path was to be cool and shady after he traveled some distance further he sat down again and looking upward said i wish the cloud people would send rain my road would be cooler and fresher in a little while a shower came and coyote was contented but in a short time he again sat down and wished that the road would be very moist that it would be fresh to his feet and almost immediately the trail was as wet as though a river had passed over it again coyote was contented but after a while he took his seat again he said to himself i guess i will talk again to the cloud people then he looked up and said to them i wish for water over my road water to my elbows that i may travel on my hands and feet in the cool waters then i shall be refreshed and happy in a short time his road was covered with water and he moved on but again he wished for something more and said to the cloud people i wish much for water to my shoulders then i will be happy and contented in a moment the waters arose as he wished yet after a while he looked up and said if you will only give me water so high that my eyes nose and mouth and ears are above it i will be happy then indeed my road will be cool but even this did not satisfy him and after travelling a while longer he implored the cloud people to give him a river that he might float over the trail and immediately a river appeared and coyote floated downstream now he had been high in the mountains and wished to go to hare land after floating a long distance he came at last to hare land and saw many hares a little distance off on both sides of the river coyote lay down in the mud as though he were dead and listened soon a woman kawat mafitis came along with a vase and a gourd of water she said here is a dead coyote where did he come from i guess from the mountains above I guess he fell into the water and died. Coyote looked up and said, Come here, woman. She said, What do you want? Coyote said, I know the hares and other small animals well. In a little while they will come here and think I am dead and be happy. What do you think about it? Kawati said, I have no thoughts at all. So Coyote explained his plan. So Coyote lay as dead, and all the hares and small animals saw him lying in the river, and rejoiced that he was dead. The hares decided to go in a body and see the dead Coyote. Rejoicing over his death, they struck him with their hands and kicked him. There were crowds of hares, and they decided to have a great dance. Now and then a dancing hare would stamp upon Coyote, who lay as if dead during the dance the hares clapped their hands over their mouth and gave a whoop like a war whoop then coyote rose quickly and took two clubs which the kawati had given him and together they killed all of the hares there was a great number and they were piled up like stones coyote said where shall i find fire to cook the hares ah he said pointing across to a high rock that rock gives good shade and it is cool 
i will find fire and cook my meat in the shade of that rock so they carried all the hares to that point and coyote made a large fire and threw them into it when he had done this he was very warm and tired he lay down close to the rock in the shade after a while he said to kawati we will run a race the one who wins will have all the hares she said how could i beat you your feet are so much larger than mine coyote said i will allow you the start of me he took a torch of the inner shreds of cedar bark and wrapped it with yucca thread and lighted it then he tied his torch to the end of his tail he did this to see that the kawati did not escape him kawati started first but when out of sight of coyote she slipped into the house of badger then coyote started with the fire attached to his tail wherever he touched the grass he set fire to it but kawati hurried back to the rock carried all the hairs on top except four tiny ones and then climbed up on the rock coyote was surprised not to overtake her he said she must be very quick how could she run so fast then he returned to the rock but did not see her he was tired and sat down in the shade of the rock why doesn't she come he said perhaps she will not come before night her feet are so small kawati sat on the rock above and heard all he said she watched him take a stick and look into the mound for the hares he pulled out a small one which he threw away but the second was smaller than the first then a third and fourth each tiny and all he threw away i do not care for the smaller ones he said there are so many here i will not eat the little ones but he hunted and hunted in the mound of ashes for the hares all were gone he said that woman has robbed me then he picked up the four little ones and ate them he looked about for kawati but did not see her because he did not look up then as he was tired and lay down to rest he looked up and saw her with the cooked hares piled beside her coyote was hungry he begged her to throw one down she threw a very small one then coyote became angry and he was still more angry because he could not climb the rock she had gone where he could not go how the rattlesnake learned to bite pima arizona after people and the animals were created they all lived together rattlesnake was there and was called the soft child because he was so soft in his motions the people liked to hear him rattle and little rest did he get because they continually poked and scratched him so that he would shake the rattles in his tail at last rattlesnake went to elder brother to ask help elder brother pulled a hair from his own lip cut it in short pieces and made it into teeth for soft child if any one bothers you he said bite him that very evening taapi rabbit came to soft child as he had done before and scratched him soft child raised his head and bit rabbit rabbit was very angry and scratched again soft child bit him again then rabbit ran about saying that soft child was angry and had bitten him then he went to rattlesnake again and twice more he was bitten the bites made rabbit very sick he asked for a bed of cool sea sand coyote was sent to the sea for the cool damp sand then rabbit asked for the shade of bushes that he might feel the cool breeze but at last rabbit died he was the first creature which had died in this new world then the people were troubled because they did not know what to do with the body of rabbit one said if we bury him coyote will surely dig him up another said if we hide him coyote will surely find him and another said if we put him in a tree coyote will surely climb up so they decided to burn the body of rabbit and yet there was no fire on earth blue fly said go to sun and get some of the fire which he keeps in his house so coyote scampered away but he was sure the people were trying to get rid of him so he kept looking back then blue fly made the first fire drill taking a stick like an arrow he twirled it in his hands letting the lower end rest on a flat stick that lay on the ground soon smoke began to arise and then fire came the people gathered fuel and began their duty but coyote looking back saw fire ascending he turned and ran back as fast as he could go 
when the people saw him coming they formed a ring but he raced around the circle until he saw two short men standing together he jumped over them and seized the heart of rabbit but he burned his mouth doing it and it is black to this day coyote and the rattlesnake sia new mexico coyote's house was not far from rattlesnake's home one morning when they were out walking together coyote said to rattlesnake tomorrow come to my house in the morning rattlesnake went to coyote's house he moved slowly along the floor shaking his rattle coyote sat at one side very much frightened the movements of the snake and the rattle frightened him coyote had a pot of rabbit meat on the fire which he placed in front of the snake saying companion eat i will not eat your meat i do not understand your food said rattlesnake what food do you eat i eat the yellow flowers of the corn coyote at once began to search for the yellow corn flowers when he found some rattlesnake said put some on top of my head so that i may eat it coyote stood as far off as he could and placed the pollen on the snake's head the snake said come nearer and put enough on my head so that i may find it coyote was very much afraid but after a while he came nearer and did as he was told then the snake went away saying companion to-morrow you come to my house all right said coyote to-morrow i will come coyote sat down and thought about the morrow he thought a good deal about what the snake might do so he made a small rattle by placing tiny pebbles in a gourd and fastened it to the end of his tail he shook it a while and was much pleased with it the next morning he started for the snake's house he shook the rattle on the end of his tail and smiled and said to himself this is good when i go into rattlesnake's house he will be very much afraid of me coyote did not walk into snake's house but moved like a snake but coyote could not shake his rattle as the snake shook his he had to hold it in his hand but when he shook his rattle the snake seemed much afraid and said companion i am afraid of you now rattlesnake had a stew of rats on the fire and he placed some before coyote but coyote said i do not understand your food i cannot eat it because i do not understand it rattlesnake insisted upon his eating but coyote refused he said if you put some of the flour of the corn on my head i will eat i understand that food the snake took some corn pollen but he pretended to be afraid of coyote and stood off some distance coyote said come nearer and place it on top of my head snake replied i am afraid of you coyote said come nearer i am not bad then the snake came closer and put the pollen on top of coyote's head but coyote did not have the long tongue of the snake and he could not get the pollen off the top of his head he put out his tongue first on one side of his nose and then on the other but he could only reach to the side of his nose his efforts made the snake laugh but the snake put his hand over his mouth so coyote could not see him laugh really the snake hid his head in his body at last coyote went home as he left the snake's house he held his tail in his hand and shook the rattle snake cried oh companion i am so afraid of you but really the snake shook with laughter when coyote reached his home he said to himself i was such a fool rattlesnake had much food to eat and i would not take it now i am very hungry then he went out in search of food Origin of the Saguaro and the Palo Verde Cacti, Pima, Arizona Once upon a time an old Indian woman had two grandchildren. Every day she ground wheat and corn between the grinding stones to make porridge for them. One day, as she put the water ola on the fire outside the house to heat the water, she told the children not to quarrel because they might upset the ola. But the children began to quarrel they upset the ola and spilled the water and their grandmother spanked them then the children were angry and ran away they ran far away over the mountains the grandmother heard them whistling and she ran after them and followed them from place to place but she could not catch up with them at last the older boy said i will turn into a saguaro so that i shall live forever and bear fruit every summer 
the younger said then i will turn into a palo verde and stand there for ever these mountains are so bare and have nothing on them but rocks i will make them green the old woman heard the cactus whistling and recognized the voice of her grandson so she went up to it and tried to take the prickly thing into her arms but the thorns killed her that is how the saguaro and the palo verde came to be on the mountains and the desert the thirsty quails pima arizona a quail once had more than twenty children and with them she wandered over the whole country in search of water and she could not find it it was very hot and they were all crying where can we get some water where can we get some water but for a long time they could find none at last way in the north under a mesquite tree the mother quail saw a pond of water but it was very muddy and not fit to drink but the little quails had been wandering so many days and were so tired they stopped under the shade of the mesquite tree and by and by one by one they went down to the water and drank it but the water was so bad they all died the boy and the beast pima arizona once an old woman lived with her daughter and son-in-law and their little boy they were following the trail of the apache indians now whenever a pima indian sees the trail of an apache he draws a ring around it then he can catch him sooner and these pimas drew circles around the trail of the apaches they were following but one night when they were asleep the apaches came down upon them they took the man and younger woman by the hair and shook them out of their skins just as one would shake corn out of a sack so the boy and the old woman were left alone now these two had to live on berries and anything they could find and they wandered from place to place in one place a strange beast big enough to swallow people camped in the bushes near them the grandmother told the boy not to go near these bushes but the boy took some sharp stones in his hands and went toward them as he came near the great monster began to breathe he began to suck in his breath and he sucked the boy right into his stomach but with his sharp stones the boy began to cut the beast so that he died then the boy made a hole large enough to climb out of when his grandmother came to look for him the boy met her and said i have killed that monster the grandmother said oh no such a little boy as you are to kill such a great monster the boy said but i was inside of him just look at the stones i cut him with then the grandmother went softly up to the bushes and looked at the monster it was full of holes just as the little boy had said then they moved down among the berry bushes and had all they wanted to eat why the apaches are fierce pima arizona elder brother coyote and earth doctor after the flood vanished began to create people and animals coyote made all the animals elder brother made the people and earth doctor made queer creatures which had only one leg or immense ears or many fingers and some having flames of fire in their knees elder brother divided his figures of people into four groups one of the apaches came to life first he shivered and said oh it's very cold and began to sway back and forth then elder brother said i didn't think you would be the first to awake and he took all the apaches up in his hand and threw them over the mountains that made them angry and that is why they have always been so fierce speech on the warpath pima arizona we have come thus far my brothers in the east there is white gopher who gnaws with his strong teeth he was friendly and came to me on his way he came to the surface from the underground four times looking in all four directions he saw a magic whitish trail slowly following this he neared the enemy coming to the surface from the underground four times during the journey their power stood in their land like a mountain but he bit it off short and he sank their springs by biting them he saw that the wind of the enemy was strong and he cut it up with his teeth he gnawed in short pieces their clouds they had good dreams and bright false seeing good bowstrings and straight flying reeds but these he grasped and bit off short the different belongings lying about he took with him turning around homeward 
on his way homeward over the whitish trail he came to the surface four times and magic fire appeared around the edges then he came to his bed he felt that the land roared rejoicingly with him in the south was blue coyote and there i sent my cry he was friendly and came to me from his blue darkness circling around and shouting four times on his journey making magic fire everywhere when he arrived he looked in four directions then understood a whitish magic trail lay before him he cast his blue darkness upon the enemy and slowly approached them circling around and shouting four times on the way like a mountain was their powers in the land and he sucked it in the springs of water under the trees he sucked in the wind that was blowing he inhaled he sucked in the clouds the people dreamed of a white thing and their dreams he sucked in and with their best bowstrings and the straight flying reeds all the different belongings which lay around he gathered and slowly turned back hidden in the blue darkness he came to me circling around shouting four times on his journey then he homeward took his way circling howling four times and shouting reached his bed with pleasure he felt all directions thud the east echoed in the sunset direction was black kangaroo mouse an expert robber to him i sent my cry he was friendly to me and came hidden in black darkness sitting down four times upon his way magic fire covered the edges of his trail when he reached me he looked in all directions the magic trail brightly lay before him he threw black darkness around him and slowly reached the enemy sitting down four times upon the trail he found a bag of the enemy with much prized possessions it was tied one knot on top of another but he bit them off he took from it the blue necklaces blue earrings and the different belongings lying around gathered up with him then he slowly took his way back on the magic trail with magic fire everywhere hidden in his yellow darkness he returned to me he left the others at the council and in darkness took his homeward way resting four times he sat on his bed and felt all directions of the earth rustling in the darkness darkness lay all around i called on owl the white bloodsucker to him i sent my cry he was friendly and came down to me with four thin flies sailing on the way he looked in all directions the magic trail brightly before him lay he flew with four thin flies toward the enemy the mountain of their power which stood in the land he bit off short the springs he bit off and their very good dreams the best bowstrings and the straight flying reeds he grasped and cut very short he bit off their flesh and made holes in their bones from the things gathered he made a belt from a bowstring then he returned he came through the whitish mist of dawn in four flights the people held a council leaving them there he after four thin flies reached his bed in the gray dawn mist then in all directions he heard the darkness rattling as he lay there the spirit land galle nomero russian river california when the flames burn low on the funeral pyres of the galle nomero indian mourners gather up handfuls of ashes and scatter them high in air thus the good mount up into the air or go to the happy western land beyond the big water but the bad indians go to an island in the bitter waters an island naked and barren and desolate covered only with brine spattered stone swept with cold winds and the biting sea spray here they live always breaking stone upon one another with no food but the broken stones and no drink but the salt sea water song of the ghost dance paiute kern river california the snow lies there rorani 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 the milky way lies there the milky way lies there this is one of the favorite songs of the paiute ghost dance 
it must be remembered that the dance is held in the open air at night with the stars shining down on the wide extending plain walled in by the giant sierras fringed at the base with dark pines and with their peaks white with eternal snows under such circumstances this song of the snow lying white upon the mountains and the milky way stretching across the clear sky brings up to the paiute the same patriotic home love that comes from lyrics of singing birds and leafy trees and still waters of the people of more favored regions the milky way is the road of the dead to the spirit world end of part seven end of myths and legends of california and the old southwest by katherine barry judson